Hunter misfire? Joe Biden's son defends himself against accepting jobs in Ukraine and China. Did I make a mistake? Well, maybe in, in, in the grand scheme of things, yeah. How will this impact his father's campaign? That's debatable. As Democrats gear up to go head-to-head -head in Ohio tonight, the co-hosts reveal what they need to hear from the candidates and who's hanging on by a thread. Plus, Rachel Ray is lunching with the ladies, dishing on her sweet and savory life, and revealing how she handles tabloid rumors about her personal life. Let's light up Hot Topics with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sunny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. be back on Thursday. She's having a good old time, I think. I think she's watching us. No. 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 Would you? No. Okay. <laughs> when you were having that baby, you weren't watching the show? Like, oh. Every day. Every. Uh, <laughs> make it easier to push. <laughs> right. Turn on the view. Turn on the view. I'll get this baby out of here. So. I'm That's just how silly it's done. Today. <laughs> right. You need to yeah, go into labor, out. turn this on. That's right. <laughs> you know, Joe Biden's son Hunter was on GMA this morning to defend himself against conspiracy theories from you know who about his foreign business deals in China and uh, board position for a Ukrainian gas company. Take a look. You know what? I'm a human. And you know what? Did I make a mistake? Well, maybe in, in, in the grand scheme of things, yeah. But did I make a mistake based upon some un an ethical lapse? Absolutely not. Why did you leave the board in April? It's a five-year term. And you chose and not to I chose continue. not to. Yeah. Why? I think it's pretty obvious why. This is your opportunity to say why. Well, because this is what becomes a distraction, because I have to sit here and answer these questions. And so that's why I've committed that I won't serve on any boards or I won't work um, uh, directly for any foreign entities when my dad becomes president. <laughs> so... Did he need to come out and do all of this? Was this the right time? I mean, I, I know he doesn't have anything to do with saying, you know, put it on today. That's a GMA call. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 was this necessary given in, in our history in America of folks working in different places and such? Well, you know, I, I certainly think that um, there have been a lot of people that have said, wow, why hasn't Hunter come out? Uh, we haven't heard enough uh, of, a, of a denial from the Bidens. And so perhaps they wanted to put it to rest. But I just think it's the height of hypocrisy for Donald Trump and his family to say anything about any other family's foreign interests anywhere in the world. Because we know, even though he's, right? I mean, even though he's president, he has work. Uh, you know, he, he, his sons are running his company, and they have work in two dozen countries, including Turkey in Istanbul, and we know what's going on in Turkey. And the other thing is Ivanka works in the White House, and she just got all these trademarks from China. Jared is meeting with people in the White House. He works for the White House, meeting with people for loans, loans which he received. So don't tell me that his family isn't using the office of the presidency almost like a cash register. So he should say nothing about no one. Just my opinion. Look, I, I was one of the first to say that there were, it didn't, didn't look good when this came out. And I am someone that says, get out in front of it, put a face on it, let people know that you're a human being. And I, and I think he did a good job of that. Um, and what I loved, he said, my dad doesn't have to defend me, but he, he has to love me. And my dad loves me more than anything. Um, this story's not going away because this is what the impeachment is all about. And the president and his kids are going to hammer this home. Uh, he also wants to stay out of politics. He's like, I don't want to be a political football. Leave mm -hmm. me out of this. And speaking as someone like Megan, who's been in politics as a kid, if you don't want to work in the White House or the administration, 
it's a tough position to be in. You don't want to mm -hmm. be involved. So I actually think he did himself some favors because the debate's going to happen tonight. Tomorrow, the headlines, I hope the headlines are this interview still because the Democrats have a lot of other issues to be talking about right now, including the life of the American people. Mm -hmm. Our military, Syria, the economy, yeah. health care, the list goes on and on and on. So if this is our biggest issue right now, what's going on with Hunter Biden. Yes, it looked bad. I hope that we can all learn from this, including the Trump family, and say ethics do matter. Where we work matters. But we've got bigger issues to solve right now, in my opinion. We've got to move on. I'm sorry, I'm kind of over the story. I really am. I think we need yes, to move along as a country. unfortunately, the rest of the country is trying yeah. to figure it out. But go ahead, Ben. Mm -hmm. This is hard for me. I totally disagree with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think he did a great job. Mm. Um, I think when he said, look, I'm a private citizen, part of the problem is he also said I probably wouldn't have gotten this job if I weren't a Biden. Mm -hmm. And I think it was some criticism that's been held against other politicians' mm -hmm. children is you sort of have to choose your lane. And I get that um, there are kids who don't, and I say kids, by the way, he's almost 50 years old, mm -hmm. Pe family members of politicians who say they don't want to be about it. But I know for my family, and again, it's just my experience, you're a unit. And I always say it's like being in a mafia family and you all roll together and you know what you're getting into. So the oppo that's done, I don't understand why you would do this interview at this moment in time. And maybe this was just like a call by ABC, but this will be a conversation in the debates tonight. And if you don't think Julian Castro or Kamala Harris is going to take the shot when they have it, metaphorical shot, I keep saying that because I talk like a redneck, I'm sorry. Um, I don't understand the strategy of having it done right now. I would have preferred to see him in a suit. I would have preferred to see him one-on-one um, -on -one in a studio. I think it's fine if you're talking about your addiction issues, but when you're talking about possibly taking, well, taking money that people have questionable ethics behind, and listen, it, this is breaking my heart. It's breaking my heart all day long. I love Joe Biden. I love his family. Hunter Biden has had a lot of issues he's struggled with for a long time. But you know what's also breaking my heart? Some of these poll numbers. Elizabeth Warren is leading in the CBS YouGov poll 32 to 24 percent in New Hampshire. So she's going to take these opportunities. And yes, the American public, I don't know who cares, but Democratic primary voters are going to care. And Elizabeth Warren, mark my words tonight, or one of these guys, one of the 12 people running in girls, will take the shot in front of them. Well, I think it's interesting that that Joe Biden was the vice president for eight years. Mm -hmm. And this has now come up. He And also, you know, uh, Hunter was working with this company before he became vice president. So they knew him, and so it's not unusual. But, you know, this is, this is something that this particular president likes to do. He likes to bend over and spew poo out mm -hmm. when he's nervous. Mm -hmm. He likes and to project so, also yes, what he's guilty of. He projects on other people. Look, it doesn't mm -hmm. abs absolve the Trump family at all in any way. Theirs mm -hmm. is arguably much worse, but the problem for Democrats is you are setting the precedent that we are so much better, cleaner. We are not the swamp people that the Trumps are. Well, actually, and when you have this conversation actually, that's actually on the national the, everybody stage. Everybody is the Trump, is the, is the swamp people if we read and see who is, you know, from, yeah, from the Bushes to Jim, from John yeah, Quincy. Yeah, the Adams, people running all the way, yeah. But I, I don't think Quincy. Elizabeth Warren a, thinks she's a swamp person. No, the, most people don't think but, they're swamp people. But what's most the, people what's the are trying. To, well, I'm no, just. I'm saying, what's me, the alternative to the Hunter Biden response? Well, like, the alternative to the Hunter speak. Biden. No, I think Joe spoke about I would have done it, it earlier. I, number one. Well, I think Joe spoke about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of have to think. Well, how dumb was everybody in the White House to not have seen this eight years ago? I mean, this is this is not like this just happened. Eight, the man was vice president for eight years. So if no one looked at it, nobody said, oh, this is terrible. And he said in this interview, you know, maybe the optics, yeah, maybe the optics are not great. Okay. Yeah. But there, you can't point to anything that my father did. You can't illegal. point to anything that I did. That's illegal. That's and to me, that is the key. That's what the, the key. Democrats need to do tonight is what they've needed to do every time they Convince get together. The American people. Tell people them. what you're going to do for them. Tell them how you're going to make it better. Because now, Americans, you can't put your kid on the summer program because you don't have any money because you couldn't put anything aside. But that's the American you're working, public broadly. Well that's, well, that's what I'm saying. But you, I, I'm talking about primary voters and the I'm battleground talk, that's I'm going on right about now. Everybody who is going to vote, because to me, if you're not, if you can't convince America why 
you're going to make it better for them just on a yeah. daily basis because you you americans we all are working to pay our taxes we are taxed but, within an inch of our behinds by everybody and part of the problem is the man that's in there now mm -hmm. put together a tax program that was supposed to make it better and did but okay I, I understand i hear you okay Loud i know clear. you do i do and i respect what you're saying thank you but i am saying that for me the primary battleground that's happening right now and primary voters are still different than general electorate voters and this is a huge distraction and it's a huge narrative problem again when democrats are saying look at all the as you so eloquently stated sonny all of the money that the trumps are making and at the same time mm -hmm. uh, hunter biden is refusing to say how much money he made off these involvements he says i'm a private citizen i'm not going to sit here and open my kimono as it relates to how much money i make to me mm -hmm. make there there's many different ways he could have answered the question and no no one is more emotionally involved with Joe Biden at this table than I am. I love him and his family dearly. I got dearly. that. I got I that. would have preferred a cleaner interview. But don't you All think right. it, Wait, hold mm -hmm. up. Let's go. Let's go and then come back if we're going to okay. do more. We'll be back with more Hot Topics. Later, Bolton bombshell. Shocking testimony that former National Security Advisor John Bolton warned White House lawyers about the effort to dig up dirt on the Bidens in Ukraine. How bad is this for the president? This week, get ready for one explosive week on The View. Tomorrow, one gutsy woman joins a table of gutsy women when Chelsea Clinton guest co-hosts. Plus, Alyssa Milano, James Spader, Victoria Beckham, and we're closing out the week with a musical performance by Common. It's all this week on The Later. Rachel Ray serving up a scrumptious spread and dishing on 50 years of memories and meals from a sweet and savory life. because I think I said that Hunter worked with Burisma before Joe was VP. I should have said that he worked as an advisor to Burisma uh, through his firm before Burisma invited him to join mm -hmm. their board. My bad. Mm -hmm. So it changes everything. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes, matter, yeah, well, sometimes if you, you misspeak or you speak too fast, you just got to say, oh, yeah, this live is what, what I got to yep. say. It's live and we actually are alive up here. <laughs> We're actually here. We this is happening in real time. This yeah, is happening true. in real no time. No safety net like everybody else who tapes. That's <laughs> gotcha. That's just a different. So, you know, we. we I'm going to. Did you want to. Oh, I just yeah. wanted to mention uh, one thing, two things. One, um, Hunter Biden also had experience, board experience. He yeah. was on the board of Amtrak before he joined this mm -hmm. board. So the notion somehow that he got it just because of his name, um, I don't know is 100% completely true in right. terms of the nepotism oh. allegations. The other thing um, that, that I think, and I was going to ask you, Megan, mm -hmm. is why... Um, you know, this is the Trump narrative that, that they are corrupt, that the Bidens are corrupt. I don't understand why the Democrats don't just come out and say nothing illegal was done. Don't buy into the Trump narrative. He is projecting. Why is that not good enough? Because it's helping his, it's helping the adversaries. It's helping anybody who's running against Biden. And I think, again, it's a blood sport. That's what's so, un I mean, uncomfortable and and intense about the primary process is on both sides, you eat each other in order to find out who's strongest, who's best, well, who's, who's going to be able person? to go against yeah. Trump the, yeah. the best. And again, it's not, again, we've said it's not illegal. The yeah. ethics of it are questionable, which is why this is has fever pitched to a mm -hmm. two hot topic story mm -hmm. GMA interview. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't think it's going to, I actually don't think this is going to go away. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're Elizabeth Warren and you're, you want to drain the Trump swamp, she's going to use it or her surrogates are going to use it in any way they well, can. Well, it certainly okay. won't. I mean, the president will likely be impeached by the House because of all of this, right? Sure. It'll be interesting tonight in the debate to see if um, his opponents attack him for this because you saw how that uh, somebody will. Kamala Harris well, somebody took that route and it didn't, well it didn't end well for her. It didn't end well for her. Well, yes. Well, it's just <laughs> not true. Well, the debate tonight, by the way, has 12 people on it, which I find way yeah. too many because I last time it was 10. I can't even wrap my head around it. Yeah. I follow politics every day. Your average American, that is too much. Yeah. yeah. I do think we need to get to a place where like, who are our but choices? How you, well, but you can't see that's not how, how democracy works. 
us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that See, democracy no. doesn't work it's that way. So we have said to every, we have, we said since I was a little baby, mm -hmm. you know how long ago that was, <laughs> you know, anybody can run for office. Anybody can run for president. And people are exercising their right to do and that. I love that. And we have to, you got to let it shake out. But you yeah. can't really you know? have real conversations, I think, on a debate stage when mm -hmm. there are 12 people and you only have a certain amount of time. I find each of these debates, there's only so much I take away from it. Yeah. And it's hard for, it's hard to come out of shooting like star eight and a half hours when yeah. you're when you're not as yeah. well known. I mean, I'm really interested to see what Mayor Pete does because he's he's doing pretty well in the polls mm -hmm. and he's he's really framed himself as a centrist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I, you know who's going to be watching this very closely is Michael Bloomberg. There are reports that he is getting pushed to run uh, mm -hmm. by none other than Judge Judy, who has said, you know, I don't think the loudest voices in the room should control the conversation. She, she loves that he's a centrist. Yeah. I agree with her on that. And it also tells me that people are concerned that the options that we have right now aren't going to necessarily beat Trump, that there is a push for other people that come down this middle lane that, I, that might... I, I think Michael has always been trying to figure out whether he was going to run. Because I don't he, know he if came he's. On the show yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, but I, I don't know that he's the right person, and you haven't heard enough from he's, him I mean, to know if he's the person. So yeah, I mean, he was good. We have city. until uh, uh, debate. The, the, the audience <laughs> seems a little. I mean, a lot of our audience is yeah. New Yorkers. Look, well, we got to wait. Wait, listen. It's, it's a, early. It's a while. It's, it's a early. while. Just keep so, watching. Th this is the thing, though. Mm -hmm. It is a while, but it's not. Mm -hmm. This is, Like, January is is going to be New Hampshire primary. That's yeah. not that far from now. And no. that's the beginning of momentum. And before that's the Iowa caucus. And it's the beginning that will get the ball rolling of momentum and feed out the other candidates. Things so, might have to go a little bit different this time because mm -hmm. we got a different, you know, this, that might this is, so. I well, I, you know what, I, I don't, and I don't know what will help anybody I yeah. just want somebody to tell us as Americans where you want to take us I already know where you know who is taking us I don't like that yeah I, I, I know where that. we are now but now you know you just who make you just like mentioned Mayor, Mayor Pete so mm -hmm. apparently <laughs> there are people who are annoyed with Mayor Pete for going after Bernie uh, Bernie Warren, oh, oh, Bernie Warren and Beto's policies <laughs> yeah. leading up to tonight. But isn't this the whole point of yeah. the debate? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is what you you're supposed your to place. do. You have to say yeah. why I'm the better choice than that person. He's also yeah. really trying to remoderate himself because right. he went mm -hmm. severely, severely left. Right. And I think he realized that lane is not only co-opted and taken, but Elizabeth Warren's doing it better than anybody else. Right. So I got to go back to the middle, and he's been attacking Beto on guns, mm -hmm. for, which, as you guys all know how I feel about guns and Beto, um, I. I thought it was better. He also called out Beto for trying to strip churches of tax exempt status mm -hmm. if they oppose gay marriage, which will play very well in the middle. But mm. he's done some real damage. I actually want Mayor Pete to come back on the show because I have some real mm. questions about some of the policies he's been put out. Mm -hmm. Because when he first came on the show, I loved him. And now I I'm just, I'm kind of done with the, the far left, whatever. Why are you laughing at me? I'm laughing because it, it, it's not always it's like, my no, 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 for me, because it's like a marriage. It is like a marriage. <laughs> well, yeah. And you're finding and I walk yeah. out. Finding new and things out. And I walk out on you. You had me close. <laughs> Someone keeps on reminding I have a friend, I have a friend that uh, is in politics, and he keeps on reminding me that at this point in the debate, no one even knew really who Barack Obama was during the primary. But he was and getting he a was, lot of attention. He was getting a little bit of wide. attention. No, no, that's not actually, it was pretty that's early. That's actually a fair assessment. You know? No disrespect, but that was the year my father was running, so I played very close attention. Yeah. This time he was getting a, actually a lot of momentum, especially in Iowa. He was getting Iowa. momentum, but he still wasn't. You know who else is getting he momentum? Became. Warren. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But he still right wasn't. Now. The, Warren, I, right I don't now. Warren, right now. I know what he was going to be the I candidate. I literally don't at this know point. anything except Here this. That's this right. is what I'm good at. Yeah. That's it. We'll be right back. Don't worry. At least half off products perfect for your busy life on the go. So get to viewyourdeal.com now. Hey, it's time for today's Hispanic Heritage Month, FYI, Megan. Yes, today we honor the first elected Hispanic U.S. Senator, Octaviano Lara Zolo. Born in 1859 in the Mexican state of Chihuahua, he moved to Tucson, Arizona at age 11. As an adult, he practiced law in Texas, fighting for Hispanic voters he felt were being exploited. Then he devoted his life to becoming a powerful political force for Hispanic American rights as governor of New Mexico, before making history as the first Hispanic elected to the Senate. Sadly, he fell ill soon after taking office and passed just six months into his term. But to this day, Lara Zolo is heralded as one of the most important Hispanic voices in all of U.S. politics. Mm -hmm. wow. 
And since this is the last day, we want to take one more look at all the incredible people we've highlighted during Hispanic Heritage Month. And thanks uh, to the millions of others who we didn't highlight, but who have done their part to enrich and empower Hispanic heritage and our American heritage that we share. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday, we talked about Fort Worth, Texas uh, police officer Aaron Dean shooting and killing 28-year-old Tatiana. Thank you. Tatiana Jefferson through the window of her own home. Last night, he was charged with murder, yes. which was pretty much one of the first times any of us have seen this happen so quickly and so clearly without having to beg people to take a look. Yeah. Were you surprised by the swiftness of this movement? I was very surprised, especially because when the shooting first happened, it seemed like the response was going to be same old, same old, which was let's, as the police department, release a photograph of a gun that was found in her home. And now remember, this is Texas. It's an open carry state. As far as I can tell, a lot of people have guns in their home there. And so it seemed to me at, at least yeah. most. So it seemed to me at first that, oh my goodness, here we go again with mm -hmm. sullying the victim. This is going to be the narrative. But they seem to do a complete 180 within about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that happened, but I'm very happy that that happened. Mm -hmm. Because it's about time that, again, as I said before, that when you're black at the Starbucks or black eating ice cream in your own home like Botham Jean or when, you know, you're Sandra Bland, it's it's time for justice to really happen equally across the world. So I'm pleased. You know what though, I'm still I'm glad that they, they acted so quickly, but I can't stop thinking about that eight year old boy. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor, the neighbor who did the right thing yeah. in calling because they saw something that they were concerned they about. Saw something and, and because said something of that, now. this is the result. Yeah. So there are a lot of people that are involved in this. Um, and it's, the whole thing's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And I think this is what the police department should absolutely do. And maybe a lesson that, that other police departments can learn from yeah. of how you respond quickly. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just horrible. But you know, it could have gone another different way. I wonder what the conversation would have been had she gotten nervous that somebody was on her property and she had shot through well, the it's a standard window. ground state so it would, would be legal well I, yeah one would one would think but it, you're in your house and you think you know Re but this is regardless this is, you sit and play in video games with their nephew would, and got shot there you go justice so far seems to at least and it could have been again anybody watching this is this is yeah. something that could have happened but, to any of us but it seems to happen to some of us more often, it seems which, is that why way. We, we, which is why we highlight it. And we're glad to see people are moving in the right direction. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Rachel Ray is coming up, and the smell of mm. the food that, yeah, you know, so is being delicious. cooked in her name <laughs> is starting to irritate me. I'm starting to get a little hangry. <laughs> look on my face like this <laughs> it's because I want some food so let's That's get so through good. this <laughs> a woman who's been married for 12 years wrote an article for the Huffington Post because she developed a big crush on a man she sees at her local Starbucks mm -hmm. she's already <laughs> in therapy with her husband because of post-pregnancy intimacy oh issues all right but she makes daily visits to flirt with the guy at Starbucks. This is not boating well, honey. No. Nope. She's hoping that it's just an innocent crush that she'll get over. What would you tell her? I would tell her, stay out of Starbucks. Exactly. Exactly. Where's my food? Exactly. <laughs> no more Starbucks. Yeah, well, take your ass to Dunkin' Donuts, lady. <laughs> Competition can be good for marriage. No, I think it could not be not when you're fun. in therapy. Not, not, no, no, no. But the idea of like, oh, like my husband, for example, only dated blondes before me. I was the first brunette, and I always say, well, who was your crush? It was Heidi Klum. He loves Heidi Klum, and so I we kind of have this joke of like, there's your lady. It's it's so innocent, you know. It's no, like, I don't like it's it. It's kind of okay. <laughs> you have you gotta have enough confidence in your marriage to to play a little play a little game. I don't like it.
Actually, I mean, there's a, a really cute guy at my Starbucks down the street. Don't go to the Starbucks. <laughs> You know, I, the, the, the question is, like, is a cr an innocent crush okay in a marriage? I just think... Not when you're in therapy! Yeah, you're in therapy! Like, and if you're in therapy, of... stay yeah. in therapy, get your ass yeah. out! And the active visiting, you know? You? She's, like, pushing it. She's, like, actively visiting, actively flirting. It's like I'm a hungry. weird temptation yeah, that's of sin. Uh, I don't like I'm it. I'm talking about, like, like an it. innocent, like, oh... I thought Heidi Klum was attractive. Well, see, yes, it's fine. with social media I'm now. Confidence in myself. Celebrities <laughs> aren't off limits. You can DM them. You can yeah. follow them. They can follow not you. All you can do little no, hookups. Yeah. Not all of them. No, yeah. not all. I don't. I, I think everybody's kind of a, a, a attainable right. now. I don't like it. Back off, gentlemen. Whoopi, you can't reach her on social media. That's right. You cannot. <laughs> no. Joy also. You can reach me in here. the kitchen. Yeah. Joy. <laughs> Where there's food being made. Yes. That we have not had. Access to, yeah. and we still got a minute Here's to go. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> She's such a good cook. Oh, Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. I love Rachel Ray, and I love the look yeah. she has. She yeah. looks really hot on the cover. Yes. And we would like to move How on. How about Rachel we ask Ray her if she's ever had an innocent crush That's on anybody? Okay. I guarantee she would have someone interesting. No, or she has. I guarantee. I'll ask her. What if Rachel Ray is your husband's celebrity crush? I guess we got a problem oh, today. Oh, yeah. On the show, ladies. It's possible. But what if we're allowed to have crushes? that we don't have to tell everybody about. Or go no visit time. them at the Starbucks <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> you know, because I feel like people, you know, when you do that, I mean, realistically, when you go and you tiptoe around stuff like that, you are, you are hoping that you are strong enough. Totally. Yes. Play and I fire. think that you should not do that to mm -hmm. yourself. Yep. If you got a problem, talk to your husband. <laughs> yeah. show i it's turned around and he surprised me he was behind me and i just jumped on him literally <laughs> and i didn't know but john was backstage oh, no. oh no. the whole did thing. he set it up oh no no was it was mad? very bad no. it was a discussion for several days <laughs> stay out of the starbucks <laughs> me on this, but during commercial breaks, you wouldn't believe what happened. Because, yeah, we love our audience that much, and anything goes. For your chance to experience the fun, go to oneiota.com for free tickets. I guess all of One of the many reasons we love when this lady pays a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and she never ever comes empty handed. Yeah. No. <laughs> so please welcome the author of the new book, Rachel Ray, 50 Memories and Meals from Sweet and a Savory Life. <laughs> the fabulous yeah. Rachel Ray. Hi, everybody. Hello. Yeah. The, right, we always you look, love look how gorgeous you look on a cover. Having, yeah, uh, they love the cover. cover. So it, the, the book. Um, commemorates uh, my 50th year, right? My, my uh, when I turned 50 yes. is when I sat down to write it. Yes. Okay. Um, but this is totally different. It's not just a cookbook. It's it's a scrapbook. You know, it's a it's kind of like a mini memoir of yeah. my life. And I wrote it because I wanted to celebrate all of the wonderful opportunities. Like I'm gonna cry oh. <laughs> that I've had in my life, and um, I wanted to prove to people that anybody could be Rachel Ray. Oh. If you're an American, yeah. the American dream is still alive. You yeah. know, yeah. and it's a uh, oh, that's great. So it's a love story. It's an ode to being an American, a grateful American. Oh. Yeah. And, and a, a grateful American waitress and food professional. That's yeah. <laughs> so what's on the table? Tell us So everything. there's so many different things going on here. Okay. Uh, whoop, you know my obsession with burgers. Mm -hmm. So I call this one the big smack. It's like my Big Mac. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, special sauce, you know, sesame seed bun. Back yes. in the yeah. day. Yes. Right? I love well, sesame seed. And then this, every year I was married in Italy, and every year mm -hmm. we take our, our close friends and, and family members to Tuscany 
balcony to the scene of the crime where John and I got married. <laughs> and the cooks that I know spend all day in the kitchen with me, and all the musicians spend all day rehearsing. And we have these big feasts at night, and the musicians sing for their supper. Oh. So this is a dish from wow. Tuscany. This is a Tuscan-style pot roast with roast potatoes. Mm, so good. My grandpa was my best friend when I was a little girl, and our favorite thing was... Um, Salty fish, so oh, yes. uh, sardine yeah. sandwiches yes. and, yeah, and anchovies. Bacalao. 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 Exactly. Yep. So this is uh, an anchovy yeah. spaghetti with preserved yeah. lemon and broccoli rind. Oh my god! My grandpa would have loved. Every year I throw a big rock and roll concert down in Texas, and this was one of the dishes we served there. Okay, invite me. Spicy wings. Please. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I will. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is um, spicy wings on uh, jalapeno cheese grits. Yum. Oh, cheese grits. Yeah. This is like a story of your life right it here. It is. I it's love a, that. And yeah. that's what the book is. It's all these fun episodes from my life. I write about Italy. I write about being the most awkward celebrity in the world. <laughs> um, it's... It, but in the end, it's supposed to just be kind of a big hug and a celebration of mm. um, if you work hard and you're grateful for it. Uh, this and you is make it. some good cheese grits. Yeah. And, and you make some good cheese grits. Good things can happen. So good. So, oh, and salad, of course, mm. so that you don't feel guilty about eating all of that. <laughs> I want to try some of this. Salad, as you call it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Because, you know, I hate anything green. I know you do. Yeah, so I'm That's why I brought the burger, whoop. <laughs> I know, but the salad was called. It was like, whoopee. <laughs> it's a meal. It's, so here I come. <laughs> it's a Sicilian-style salad, so it has citrus in it and oh, red onion and come. fennel. Mm, all look, I do uh, my... Rachel, we all love you. I mean, I think everybody I in America loves oh. you. But you're also the... Yeah, right? I mean... Maybe. But you've created a huge yeah. empire for yourself off of your passion, and I have always found that so inspiring. Mm -hmm. You're one of, like, the top five people I always look to for career goals. Thank you. You're at 50. You're a huge household entrepreneur that America loves. What advice do you give to the women out there who want to have a career like yours? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's easier than ever. Everybody has a voice now. You can go on a, a number of platforms and create your own platform. Mm -hmm. For me, if you're talking about the business side of things, mm -hmm. it was filling a niche or creating a product that doesn't exist. The oval spaghetti pot, for instance, mm -hmm. right? That's the first thing I designed mm -hmm. for the kitchen. The mop bean. The, mm -hmm. My family used to put the dish towels uh, in their waistband, and that was yeah. your apron, and then you'd use it to carry the pots yes. and back and forth, right? Mm. So we put pot holders in a, in, in a dish towel. I think that so it's smart. more than mm -hmm. ever, everybody, no matter your age, you can reinvent your life or you can start your life. Mm -hmm. You're your own boss now. It's such an exciting time. Mm -hmm. But you do have to be clear. You have to have a vision, and you have to be able to say specifically, I want to do this, and this is why, because this this has never been done before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think if you can narrow down your path and stick to it, it's a better time than ever to start. Absolutely. But you've also made cooking accessible to the masses, and I've always wanted to make all niches of politics accessible to the masses. So, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. You really have inspired me for a long time. Thank you. So. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And the, I, I can't believe when you when you came out here, you said this is your 26th cookbook. 26. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's the, it's the only book where I've ever sat down and literally wrote it. Re, exactly. Yeah. Written <laughs> essays about my yeah. my life. About I wrote all life. my books. They yeah. start in in notebooks. Everything I do in life starts with paper. When I was a little girl, everything I drew had a little bag and my mom oh. said why do you only draw girls i said what are you talking about that's a fish that's a man you know, like <laughs> and she said well because everything has a purse i said that's not a purse that's just where they keep their notebook and their pencil oh i love it exactly <laughs> oh, that's so well, you great. also say um that everyone should have experience working in a restaurant absolutely i, mean, I got fired from fridays actually <laughs> i was a waitress <laughs> i'm sorry for sweetheart. dropping food on someone I'm sorry. Um, but I, I but i also worked as a short order cook while i was in law school i think it, why do you think that i know whoopi's shocked why do you think <laughs> oh. <laughs> i have not given Anything a thought except the food. Okay. Um, why I'm you, just over here eating. Why do you? Um, because, why do you think everyone should work in a restaurant? Because the food service industry teaches. First of all, uh, it teaches you humility. It does. Yeah. yeah it, I started out as a dish machine operator. Uh -huh. Like you, you learn to be humble when you're a yeah, dish you machine do. operator. Um, I also think it 
it makes you mindful of a customer. It makes you mindful of how to listen to people yeah. and how to try and deliver something to someone and be of service. There's a lot of great tools that come from working yeah. with food. And food itself is about sharing. It's true. You know, and about making people happy and, and nurturing them in a way. You yeah, know, but you showed that on the air all your years. Because I've, I've watched probably every single one of your 30-minute meals, all your shows. They're back now. Can you believe it? I love it. I love it. 20 years, I, I love, love a gig at Food Network. That ain't bad. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> whoops, whoops, stealing some tea. I know. But I always say the best people on television are the same on and off camera. Yes. I, and that's what you've done. You've, you've brought us yeah. your home life, too. We that's know what your works husband. about we this show, dog. is that y'all are real with each other. And Sometimes too real. Yeah. <laughs> but, we are, but that's what too. people like about it. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a crazy question? Yes, baby. I grew up wanting always to go to Mama Leone's. Uh, and it's you my talk favorite about it. Childhood. You talk about it in the book. Please t remind people about what Mama Leone was. Mama Leone was. was a real person, and this restaurant was like spending the night in Italy. Mm -hmm. the The bar was the Blue Grotto of Capri, uh -huh. and the dining room looked like the village <clears throat> square, the piazza. Mm. And there were little balconies all around, and the couples that wanted to smooch and swoon would sit up uh, up top, <laughs> and the waiters uh, would sing, and Pasquale was always already. It was magic, and my mom would save all year long to take us to Mom Leone's at Christmas, take us to one show, Aww. and let us buy one toy at Fair Schwartz. And New York. Sweet. was like being it's inside great. a snow globe. It was the whole world yeah. to me to go to Mama Leone's. Oh. This is why we love Rachel Ray. Her <laughs> book, Rachel Ray 50, is available now. Can I Rachel take? Ray Lasagna Lugger <laughs> is also uh, available. And you know what? Members of our studio audience, you take it every Topics are in the house with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. today she'll be back probably on Thursday if we're very good she'll be back on Thursday <laughs> um, so this insanely disturbing fake video was shown at a conference of you know who supporters that was held at one of you know who's Miami resorts and that superimposed his face onto a scene from the movie Kingsman the Secret Service and shows him violently killing his rivals like the Clintons, Barack Obama, Maxine Waters, John McCain, Sarah Sanders and Jr. were there at the event, but they said they weren't aware of the video and the White House released a statement saying that the guy who lives there has condemned it. Now, he didn't come out and say it. Somebody said that he said that he condemned it, okay? With all the Twitter stuff he does, he couldn't come out and condemn it himself. He has someone else do it. The question is, why would somebody put this together? And who thought this was okay to show to anybody? Yeah. Because it's horrific. Horrific. Yeah. Don't watch it, by the way. There are places you can... It, it was hard for me to find it when I did. I regretted seeing just even a... It, it's, yeah. It's vile. It is one of the He's most killing disgusting people in things I've seen. I mean, it's... it's yeah, it takes place... It is church. a horrific... Well, I, I yeah. Mean, yeah, part of this is, and I've been getting into it on Twitter this morning with people over this, is that people are saying this is just free speech, you're being a snowflake, you're so sensitive. First of all, you're talking about sitting senators, and you're talking about Congress people, Maxine Waters, Mitt Romney, Adam Schiff, yeah. Bernie Sanders, President Obama, the Clintons, my father, you can't kill him again, but whatever, Rachel Maddow, Black Lives Matter, these are real people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I always thought that if you, in the same way that if you make a threat against someone in office, mm -hmm. I don't understand how this diff this video is any different. Sarah Sanders, yeah. Don Jr., and the governor of Florida, by the way, Ron DeSantis, was at this event. Mm -hmm. I don't understand where we are culturally. Where 
where entertainment is showing doctored videos of killing fellow members of Congress and people you're working with every day. Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants to talk to me about free speech, I think as all of you know, I mean, I wanted to come on here and talk about the Joker a few weeks ago, but we never got to it. I am not someone who thinks that we can't have content in entertainment and writing and that, and that talking about violence is important, but this is an entirely different thing yeah. when you're using pictures of actual people who are still alive. And how easy for all of you judging me that I'm offended and upset by the video. You try doing this when a member of your family is continued to have this happen over and over and over again and yeah. it doesn't seem to matter to anybody in Trump world whatsoever and you conservatives on Twitter if this were the opposite and it happened in an Obama event you'd be screaming bloody murder okay, wait a minute. hold on it has happened and everybody screamed bloody murder yeah no one liked it when Kathy Griffin did her thing yeah what is the difference yeah, fair enough. between that's true these things see either it works for the goose and then it works for the gander. If you're upset by it, should be this should be so yeah. insane to you. This is this is twenty. But then, yeah, well, I, where's the seat? <laughs> but uh, see, uh, it seems to me that it you would look be good, illegal. By the way. You look oh, very good. Right. You look, you look you, very Robert. like. You know, you know. Sorry, I just thank you. Thank you. On a thank you. Note today. Thank yeah. you. I, I was. I tried to do a special. My husband and my cousin is in the audience. My cousin really? is celebrating his fiftieth birthday. I didn't even realize. <laughs> uh -huh. Happy birthday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My 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 first cousin. We were we were actually raised as siblings. It's his fiftieth birthday. Oh, so. right, right, right. Good, good to see you. I knew I knew. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Um, I, I think I think what um, for me it does this would be illegal because uh, you know wouldn't that tend to incite violence against yes. these particular if, if politicians? If something happens to one of these people because of this, yeah. and by the way, Steve Scalise was shot by yeah. someone, by a complete radical crazy yeah. person and almost died. Yeah. This does happen. Yeah. So the idea that well, we're just going to be casual about it and, oh, you're just being a snowflake, you're being sensitive. No. These are real people. And I'm sure Maxine Waters' family feels the same way I do and right Trump now. And Trump actually yeah. retweeted a very similar type of, of, of um, video. I think it was in 2007 when he was body slamming and punching um, the CNN reporter. The See, the, yeah, there was an image of a CNN logo was like superimposed right. on it, and then we know that there was that man that that had these death threats against people. He also, at CNN he also, had, yeah, yeah, the bomb right? threat. The bomb yeah. threat. He also hit a golf ball at Hillary's head in one of his yes, tweets as well. Here's what I don't understand, though. That's not Wait. the same thing as shooting people with Glocks. But the president no, no, himself no, no, I mean, no, is that video. I'm just, yeah. saying, I'm just that. saying the idea that it, it starts at the top. That's what we always say. He may not have seen this video or knew, but someone approved this video to be shown. Somebody, you can't yes, just put the video on your iPhone and have it show on a projector. Yes, like it went through yeah. a chain somewhere at yes, Mar-a-Lago. And if you are the president right now, a you tweet... Where was it? it was a pro-Trump event at the Doral, Miami. Yeah. Okay, okay, but if you are tweeting all day long and you can tweet about Dancing with the Stars, it is now uh, 11 a.m. on the East Coast. We have yeah. not... We have not read a tweet yet from the president about denouncing this, this yeah, saying this. that this is vile. And that's yeah. why I say, where is the leadership? Because I'm just grateful my kids are too young to understand what's going on. But it's, not, about, it's not even just about that, because I'm old enough to understand it. And everyone here is old enough yeah. to understand it. I think we're all sick of this. And again, it's a cultural yeah. issue. It's it is. okay to show videos of a doctor video of our president shooting other politicians. In a in, church. In a, in church, a church. In a pro-Trump event with Sarah Sanders, Don Jr., and the governor of Florida present. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you saw it, you didn't see it. No event I'm going to that would ever be accepted. So I don't care about kids growing up. I care about the president. I mean, I do, but I care about the president right now. And because what about the rest of us who are processing this? And, Is it violent? And his supporters? It's disturbing? Do the oh, supporters... Yeah. Continue to support this well, kind of well, this thing. Is yeah. Why, this yeah, is why. Yeah, I got into it this morning with a conservative writer about this. Yeah, this is what I don't conservatives have to remember. You. If you don't think this is okay, that has to be the position you come from. Yeah. You can be a, a conservative and say, this is never okay. Mm. This, is ne this, is, this is about human connection. Yeah. You don't, we don't want anybody thinking this is a good idea. That's why people came down so hard on Kathy Griffin. Mm -hmm. That's why people came down so hard and all the other iterations because where someone is there, has there was yes. there was yeah, a play where um, Julius Caesar was dressed like mm -hmm. President Trump mm -hmm. and he was murdered on stage I come out against that as well mm -hmm. I think murdering of all politicians in any form is violent and could inspire violence and I don't say that about movies I don't say that about cartoons but you're talking about actual real life yeah, people that's, and yeah. members of yeah. violence Just, against living yes people. it is that and is he knows problematic here. and he knows because this is you know, this is why people have such a hard time. This has been his M.O. He has it's said, awful. it's okay, go ahead and go ahead and yeah. do that. Well, you know, 
Either we stand up for it or we let it happen. If this is okay with you, if this is what you want the guy who's supposed to be leading your country to be doing, yeah. Keep them in there here. And these people have extra we'll security back. right now. Oh, yeah. They should. I mean, well, all the people should. here should have extra security right now has been in this video. We'll be right back. Later, fake bud. Why candidate Elizabeth Warren claims the social media giant is giving the president free reign to post lies on Facebook. Prize winning journalist Ronan Farrow on shocking sexual assault allegations in his bombshell new book, Catch and Kill. And a brand new View Your Deal. So, welcome back. It is time for today's Hispanic Heritage FYI. Today we honor one of the most celebrated musical geniuses on the planet, Venezuela's Spanish conductor and violinist Gustavo Dulmel. Born in Barquasimeto, Venezuela, I hope I said that right, but if I didn't, somebody will tell me. <laughs> he began playing the violin at 10, studying conducting in his early teens, and was soon winning competitions around the world. As a conductor, he led concerts at the Vatican for the Pope and at the funeral of Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez before becoming musical director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic in 2009, 2009. He won far too many awards to list and also conducted the opening and closing titles to Star Wars 7, The Force Awakens, performed alongside Beyonce, Bruno Mars, and Coldplay in that 2016 Super Bowl. He just this year received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Wow. He's an incredible musician has done th things for young kids all over the world. He is one of the one of the top flight people on the planet. This is a great young man, and I'm thrilled that we're celebrating him today. Yes. yes. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we have to bring you like a really stupid piece of news because this is so unnecessary. So a Fort Worth. Texas police officer is on administrative leave after he shot and killed 28-year-old Atatania Jefferson through the window of her own home while she was babysitting her nephew. Now, I don't understand why the training is so bad that people forget to say, hey, put your hands up, I'm a law officer. Because yes. that's what, you know, he was supposed to do. Yeah. Put your hands up in the name of the law. Identify yourself. But then I look and I see Texas is going crazy because they walked a, uh, a young man who had some mental issues down the street between two police officers on horseback mm -hmm. with his hands tied. Yeah. And then, of course, we know about the... 2019? Yeah. Yeah. About a couple of months ago, it's it's it, it is the cop from Jean who was shot eating ice cream in his own apartment. Ice cream on his, so I have to assume that something is missing in Texas. Well, what, I, I just don't assume. know why. What's going on with de-escalation training? Like that's my that would be my first question for these police officers because in most situations like this, at least militarily, you're trying to de-escalate so it doesn't resort to violence. Mm -hmm. And he just shot a woman sitting playing video games with her nephew in her home. I don't understand well, what was it. What's strange he is that eight, the, the, uh, eight, he was eight, eight years old. Her nephew, uh, her neighbor called because their front door was open. Her neighbor was concerned for her welfare, and the police officer goes in her backyard and and doesn't announce that he's a police officer yeah. and she peers out of the window because she hears what could be an intruder in her backyard and he shoots her through the window and I mean I think you and know doesn't black identify and doesn't identify himself as a police officer I mean you can't as if you're black you can't eat ice cream in your own home you can't go to Starbucks you can't barbecue while black now you can't but you know be, be with your with your video you, playing videos with your nephew in your own home why are black people disproportionately shot four times more than white people in these United States of America I don't understand what I would like to suggest, because we're going to talk about this more, but we have such a big show coming up that we're going to get through it. Uh, but yes, I know. 
<laughs> I know, I know. But what we want to say is that this is a detriment to everybody. Yeah. If it can happen to black people, it can happen to Asian people and white people and men and women. This is a problem, and we're going to talk about it, but not more today. We are going to talk about it later on. Right now, we're going, because when we come back, we got a hell of a show. Journalist Ronan Barrow respond to Matt Lauer's scathing denial of the rape allegation against him in Ronan's new book? Why does he say NBC tried to kill his investigation into sexual misconduct accusations against Harvey Weinstein? He's live on The View next. Ronan Farrell has earned a Pulitzer Prize and helped ignite the Me Too movement for his fearless reporting that helped bring down Harvey Weinstein, amongst others. His new book, Catch and Kill, is full of really shocking and hard claims about how far people went to silence him, from Weinstein hiring ex Mossad agents to spy on him to his own employers at NBC News telling him to stop his investigation. We got to warn you, viewers, this is really mature subject matter. So if you have kids at home, now's the time to get them out the room. Yeah. We give you a couple of beats. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, Ronan Fair. Yeah, Guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Thank you for coming. And for yeah. consistently at this table tackling those hard subjects. Thank you. I really I respect the hell out of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've all just been engulfed in this and we got a, a early copy, so thank oh. you for trusting us. Um, first, I just want to thank you on behalf of all women in media. You're making it safer for us. Thank because you. it has been open season on, we, and Abby and I came from Fox. It's been open season for a really long time. Because The View is live. Waging Warren. The candidates made frontrunner Senator Elizabeth Warren their biggest target at last night's debate. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. Who scored the biggest hits and who needs to step aside? And guest co-host Chelsea Clinton is giving her post-debate wrap-up and taking on rumors she wants to run for Congress. Could there be a big announcement at the table? Plus, she's the actress and activist who helped ignite the Me Too movement. Alyssa Milano on how she's showing the next generation it's never too early to voice your view. Let's go! Here come Hot Topics with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sunny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. She happened to be walking past. <laughs> and she said, well, let me go in and see how these girls are doing. And joining us as guest co-host today, please welcome okay. activist and co-author of the book, Gutsy Women, and pretty good girl, woman in her own right, Chelsea Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, before... Yeah, I love you. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, listen, we're glad to see everybody. We are. We're glad everybody comes out. Because yeah. you don't have to come to us. You could go to another yeah. show, and you came to us. So yay for y'all. Yeah. But so, we have to start by asking, because apparently there are rumors that you are considering running uh, for Congress. Now, there are. Um, Nita Lowry, Congresswoman Nita Lowry, is not seeking re-election. Is that rumor? Is it a, are you thinking about it? Or? I'm not considering running for Congresswoman okay. Lowry. No, 
why um, not? Oh, that well, kid. Thank you, Sunny. Oh, gosh, thank Look you. Um, you know, but, Whoopi, I understand why people are asking, oh, and nice. some one has asked me some version of this question for literally as long yes. as I can remember. I don't know, yes. Abby's nodding. Like, one of my earliest memories is being three or four and someone saying, like, Kelsey, you're gonna run for governor of Arkansas one day. <laughs> and, you know, I share that because I think it's a question that shouldn't just be asked of people whose last name is Clinton or Hutzman. It's a question we should be asking kids, like, do you think about running for office one day? Young people, women. And I hope that if the answer to that question is, yes, I'm considering it, that you'll really think about doing it and go to run right. for something and other resources that exist to help you do that. Do you think you ever will? I don't know, but right now the answer's no. Oh, all right. You just had a baby. I just had a baby. Three kids. Uh, Three kids. Did you, did you get any sleep last night? I actually got the most sleep last night that I've gotten since Jasper was born. Good. Oh, I slept that's a good night. Almost seven hours. That's a good night. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Enjoy today while it lasts. I mean, I feel like I have superpowers because I got a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> There's some disappointed people in the audience, but it's okay. Yeah. One, have day, to one wait. day you might. You never Maybe. know. Yeah. Maybe, but not now. Well, there's a lot of not disappointing things happening, happened last night, apparently, on television. Mm -hmm. And as the Democrats met in Ohio for the fourth presidential debate, and the biggest target, apparently, of the night was Senator Elizabeth Warren. Take a look. Costs will go up for the wealthy. They will go up for big corporations and for middle class families. They will go down. I what will not money? sign a bill into law that does not lower costs for middle class families. At least Bernie's being honest here and saying how he's going to pay for this and that taxes are going to go up. And I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but you have not said that. And I think we owe it to the American people to tell them where we're going to send the invoice. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually Actually get done. Okay. I agreed with the great job she did, and I went on the floor and got you votes. I got votes for that bill. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I guess they think Elizabeth is the one to, to uh, beat right now. Did she? Did she hold her own? I thought she was terrific, actually. You know, she she is the lady with the plan. It's clear that she is obviously the front runner, at least in their minds, because that's why she was under attack so much. She never lost her cool. She didn't lose her pacing. I think that's what you need to do in a debate. Um, she had the most time speaking. She spoke for 22 minutes and 32 seconds, yeah. as opposed to, let's say, Kamala Booker, uh, Kamala Harris, rather, who it spoke happens. for 1224, 12 12 and Booker spoke for 1119. So, I mean, you know, she had she took up, up the majority of the time. Time. Um, I think it was a misstep, though, with the, her Medicare for All um, plan, because we know she's the lady with the plan, no, no. but she's not really explaining how she's going to pay for it, and yeah. they pounced on her for that. Time and time again. Time I actually time give, again. I give Mayor Pete, uh, and I think Amy Klobuchar, uh, kudos. Mayor Pete, who I've liked from the beginning, but I thought last night was his best performance yet. He came out swinging. He's in that moderate lane. Uh, Klobuchar's there, but Biden also... But he delivers what Biden is saying, I think, so much better. He's a great debater. And so if you were just reading this debate, the transcript, and you didn't know their age, you didn't know what they looked like, you didn't know much about them, I think the, 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 the way that people were polling today would be very different. I think the way we'd be talking about them would be very different. Mm -hmm. His numbers in fundraising as well is, yeah. uh, you look at his campaign coffers, he has 23.3 million compared to Biden, who has 8.9. Money they can spend right now in their campaign. Does money have a speaks. Plan. Listen, money speaks, but, he, but, but, he but hit, BS walks. He hit back and on plan, Warren. And just because you got money doesn't mean he you have He does have, have a plan. And wh plan. what I like about him is he says, let's live in reality. If you want to win this election, you got to give people a choice. So what has he said that, so he's saying that on got healthcare, you fired for up? Example, you, he's all for, like, let's find better health care and more options for people. But you can't tell the American people, you can't, you don't have a choice in this. He also had a great moment with Beto O'Rourke on guns when Beto said, I'm going to go in people's homes and take people's guns. He huh? said, you, this is a purity test. Mm -hmm. That's never going to pass. So let's live in reality once again. I think that is, that is the way to beat Trump. Mm -hmm. If you go so far to the left and say, we're going to live in this world that's never going to exist, you're not going to get people in the middle. Yeah. They're going to have no option but to maybe vote for Trump again. Uh -huh. That's what's going to happen. Well, if that's the only option for people in the middle, then it's not the middle. Amen. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not the middle if that's the only option. Mm -hmm. What do you think?
Oh, I have many things to say. Last night I was live tweeting it because there's only so much time in these segments. Mm -hmm. um, I will say uh, I thought Warren did a terrible job and she was on her heels all night and it showed just how vulnerable she actually is. We want you to on her heels. Maybe I disagree. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm watching it as a Republican. You're watching it as That's a true. far left progressive. I say that with respect to you. Oh, I'm not a far left um, progressive at all. Actually. Compared to me, you are. Compared to everybody in this room, it is. It's fine. But I will say um, I thought I actually thought Mayor Pete came out swinging really hard and I mm -hmm. thought it was quite impressive. I don't know what Beto's doing other than running for MSNBC host coming up. I'm sure he'll get a good hour. Tom, that's right. Tom Steyer's Christmas tie was deeply distracting the entire time. And I want to say Andrew Yang brought up the topic of automation. The only reason why we're talking about automation is because an entrepreneur from New York, not from California, I messed that up when he was on here, brought it to the forefront and he had a way better answer than Elizabeth Warren did. Hmm. And also, I think, uh, you know, it's one of the things that people slammed your mom about. Because people forget that, you know, it's not immigrants coming over and taking your jobs away. Your jobs are being phased out. They are being yeah. done by uh, machines. So let's be realistic about what's going on and, and find ways to get people, to encourage people to find new ways of of moving your life ahead when, you know, because we've seen it happen when automation comes in. A lot of stuff disappears. But we'll be at least... On the Democratic stage, those were issues that were being discussed, yeah. right? At yeah. least, yeah. like, gun violence was discussed. At least opioids were discussed. Mm -hmm. At least universal health care was discussed. And not treated as a pipe dream, but treated as something that has to become reality in our country. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, like, just the contrast to Republicans, with all due respect, I could not have been more clear you because of feelings. what we were talking about <laughs> right. last right. night. And I like that we had this dynamic... <laughs> Do you want this thing? What is it? It's a, a moment well, from last night that you all were talking about this morning and you, Chelsea, were talking about it. Take a look. We are seeing all over this country women's reproductive rights under attack. And God bless Kamala. But you know what? Women should not be the only ones taking up this cause and this fight. And men, it is not just because women are our daughters and our friends and our wives. It's because women are people and people deserve to control their own body. So that okay. was kind of a special moment, I thought, last night, because so often, with all due respect to the men in the audience, mm -hmm. when women's rights are discussed, men often start with as a father of a daughter, mm. or as the son of a mother, mm -hmm. or as the brother to a sister, or as a husband to my wife. No! It shouldn't matter. Like, our human rights are our human rights, and those should be respected and protected and advanced because we're human beings, not yeah. because of your relationship to a woman in your own life. And I was so, so, so grateful that he made that point so strongly last night. Yeah. He did That's make a good point. Strongly. He also a said point. as a vegan at one point, and I was like, you got the vegan point locked and loaded. Right. You got I it. Do, I, I was like, I, I don't know what that has to do with anything. I don't, maybe I'll ask Thank both you. Guys but why won't Elizabeth Warren answer the question on whether or not the middle class will have their taxes raised with the Medicare for All? Because she's very good at spinning. I think they're going to be raised, and I think they're going to Sanders save, said it. They're going to save money by, let's say, perhaps not having the insurance premiums that so many of us have when we go to the doctor. So but perhaps why not they'll have more money. That? In their pockets, but I think you have to, if you look at the breadth and depth of her of her plan, the money has to probably come from taxing the middle class as well. I, I think that's just the truth. She can take some of that money, that trillion dollars that Amazon yeah. is sitting on. Yeah. Well, that's what she was saying initially. I, well, no, I know. You know, the only that one that anymore. said it is Andrew Yang, and I still don't understand why that idea of trillion dollar companies which is something we've never had in this kind of know that we've never had in the company before well you know what let me shut up we'll be right back <laughs> okay so you know these ladies aren't afraid to voice their views proud of it but now it's time for you to voice yours so grab your phone and join the conversation. Twitter's gonna go wild. We want to hear your take on hot topics. Have you been reading what's on Twitter? And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our podcast on any podcast app. And of course, watch us weekdays on ABC.
cắt trước ấy đang làm ảnh Đã hôm qua anh đang 18 phát ừ, còn ừ, vì cậu đã còn khỏe vậy còn luôn năm 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 mày biết được còn điếu Chào ba chưa bản thử rồi, bản test rồi have liver problems or other medical conditions and about any medications you take especially those that may affect blood clotting 2.3% of patients reported joint pain ask your doctor about Vasipa prescription power proven to work Pampers is here to help every parent love the changes a baby brings is the first and only diaper with air dry channels. They stay up to three times drier, so babies can sleep soundly all night. Pampers. Stumptown is the most watched new series premiere. It is damn satisfying. It's fun, thrilling, and entertaining. Who's got two thumbs and is ready to spy? <laughs> and the cast crushes it. Don't make me put that back up. We got a plan? Yeah, I got a plan. It's airtight. Yeah. Airtight. Barracuda. Stump down tonight on ABC. Still ahead, Alyssa Milano on why she decided it was time to reveal her sexual assault nightmare on a movie set. So I'm going to finish making my point. I'm going to try to make it more succinct than I was doing. In 2018, 60 Fortune 500 companies paid zero federal income tax, according to the Institute of Taxation and Shameful. Economic Policy. Companies like Amazon, Delta, Chevron. Amazon became a trillion-dollar company last year. Yeah. The idea that... I don't mind. See, I don't mind if you're not paying your taxes because you've built this amazing company. This is still America where we say you can come here and build a company. I'm all for that. But if you're making a trillion, if you're a trillion dollar company, we should be benefiting from that as people who are a maybe part of families whose companies have been closed because you've opened this gigantic thing that's okay i don't mind that you're making money i like making money but when you become a trillion dollar company you need to pass some of that on sure. and that two cents that you want to take from me after all the taxes that i'm paying for your phone tax you don't know what your phone tax is for do you, you don't know what any of those those taxes are for. Mm -hmm. You're traveling on the highways, you're paying uh, a toll. You're paying taxes just to stay here. 
I want some of that money back, and I want it from the places where we spend a lot of money, and those are those big companies. That's what I want them to tell, because people can't send their kids to camp because they can't write anything off now. I don't like that. It was the, that little bit of money that you got back was something you could you could look forward to. I mean, my kid was like, February's coming, I'm gonna get that check. Yeah, you know, it doesn't happen anymore. February came, no check. She was mad. <laughs> she was really because it's that you know I don't have to do everything for. Her. That's the money she deals with her grandkids with. She can do what she needs to do, and that money's gone. So yeah. if you if we're just working to pay taxes for stuff that isn't helping us. I don't see why we can't dip and get some of that. Well, I think all of the candidates have mentioned that they're going to roll back a lot of the Republican tax mm -hmm. code. That Thank you, the one that was The one that was just... Yeah, he, uh, he was good on that last that night. Was, that, that was changed. Mm -hmm. That was a huge topic last yeah. night. That was like a 30-minute right. part of the debate was just the size of these companies and what they're each going to do. And then it went into some uh, strange back and forth about whether Trump's Twitter account should be deleted. Yeah, but I think the Sunny's point is a really good one, right? Is that one of the reasons this is such an acute conversation is not only do we have companies paying a lot of money to avoid paying taxes, mm -hmm. which I think is shameful, um, but we're also living in a reality where the Trump administration with the Republicans in Congress slashed corporate tax rates, right? right? And not only are they not paying their fair share, Whoopi, you know, they're not helping to be the world kind of that we want, I think, all our kids to grow up in. Yeah. Help paying for clean water, paying for good yeah. infrastructure, yeah. paying for they universal health care. Pay, yes. They could be much better corporate yeah, citizens. They could be much better corporate citizens in ways they themselves are going to benefit. That's a Republican idea anyway, that just the, the idea that companies should give so much more back to society. In the sense that, like, you know, for example, like my grandpa created a company and he gave basically all of his money back to building a cancer hospital. Mm -hmm. Do what you can in your community, in your mm -hmm. environment, to help the people around you, to help the people yeah. that you serve. Well, that's generally the, the, the notion, right? Mm -hmm. The Republican notion. And Megan can speak to it better, but yeah, that the, the corporations are given these tax, uh, these tax cuts because they think then they're going to hire more people. There'll be more jobs. They're going to put it, you know, back into the community. That I don't happen. see that happening. Yeah. It that seems like people are just reinvesting well, in their own companies, buying back, buying back their stock, and not necessarily investing in the communities where they're opening up stores, not raising uh, salaries for people in their companies. So I don't know why that is still the notion, about, yeah. but, wow. but that's, there are some it good doesn't ones, seem to that, work. We that couldn't trust them just to do that, just, right? Yeah. That's why we need to have higher taxes on them so that it is expected of yeah, them that yeah. they then do that. And somebody said age came up yesterday. Is that correct? It did. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I you know, they asked, I, I, it, it was... Um, uh, Aaron that asked a question, mm -hmm. kept on asking questions about Bernie's heart attack, then w went to, I think we have a clip, but then she went to Elizabeth Warren and she also went to uh, Biden, mm -hmm. but didn't necessarily ask the younger folks on, on the about stage. Their there's, there's a clip they're telling me in my uh, ear. Let me invite you all to a major rally we're having in Queens, New York. That is how I think I can reassure the American people. One of the reasons I'm running is because of my age and my experience. With it comes wisdom. I will outwork, outorganize, and outlast anyone, uh, and that includes Donald Trump. Trump, Mike Pence, or whoever the Republicans get stuck with. <laughs> They clearly were all very vibrant mm -hmm. uh, last night. And just, again, like the juxtaposition to Trump, when he ran, we knew nothing about his health. Right. He still discloses... Remember that doctor? Yes. yes. That was doctor, doctor, the doctor, 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 the doctor, the doctor, the handwritten yes. note. Yeah. And now, you know, we still know very little about his health from his official... And he's 73 exam. as well. So it, it makes me so very upset, though, because hearing, I, I do think there was such an emphasis, at least for me at the time, when my dad was running... He literally had to have a uh, journalist go to Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. to go through to the point that, like, mm. he apparently had a mole on his back that was removed that I didn't even know about. And there was an absolute obsession with his health. Yeah. And if my dad had had a heart attack mid-campaign, people would be screaming bloody murder. So I don't, I am not ageist. I don't, you, you could be 100. My grandma's 108. She could run this country better than Trump, period. <laughs> so I don't have a problem with age. But I would like to know... I think everyone should be in the same way release your taxes. Yeah. I think you should release your health records as well. Yeah. And there you go. We'll be back. Thank you. I must admit, 
I had a few good tricks to help hide my bladder leak pad. Like the old tunic tug. You know it, right? But I don't have to with Always Discreet. I couldn't believe the difference. It's less bulky and it really protects. Watch this. The super absorbent core turns liquid and odor to gel and locks it away. So I have nothing to hide. Always Discreet for bladder leaks. I see you found the snacks. Mmm, delicious. I need this recipe. Everyone thinks I made them, but it's actually Decon. What was that? Judy? Decon. Mice love it. To death. There it is. The coffee ring. It's been sitting there all week. And just like that, it's shining. Look at you. Beautify it with Pledge. S.C. Johnson. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a year old or a few years old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana and enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. It's hard to get all the daily fiber we need from food alone. That's why I love Fiber Choice. With the fiber found in many fruits and vegetables. Fiber Choice, number one GE-recommended chewable prebiotic fiber. Find it in the digestive aisle. Struggling to clean tough messes with wipes? Try Mr. Clean Magic Eraser Sheets. Just wet, squeeze, and erase icky messes in microwaves. And on stovetops. For an amazing clean, get the power of Mr. Clean Magic Eraser in disposable sheets. When you're looking for answers, it's good to have help. Because the right information at the right time may make all the difference. At Humana, we know that's especially true when you're looking for a Medicare supplement insurance plan. That's why we're offering seven things every Medicare supplement should have. It's yours free, just for calling the number on your screen. And when you call, a knowledgeable licensed agent producer can answer any questions you have and help you choose the plan that's right for you. The call is free, and there's no obligation. You see, Medicare covers only about 80% of your Part B medical expenses. The rest is up to you. That's why so many people purchase Medicare supplement insurance plans like those offered by Humana. They're designed to help you save money and pay some of the costs Medicare doesn't. Depending on the Medicare supplement plan you select, you could have no deductibles or co-payments for doctor visits, hospital stays, emergency care, and more. You can keep the doctors you have now, ones you know and trust, with no referrals needed. Plus, you can get medical care anywhere in the country, even when you're traveling. With Humana, you get a competitive monthly premium and personalized service from a health care partner working to make health care simpler and easier for you. You can choose from a wide range of standardized plans. Each one is designed to work seamlessly with Medicare and help save you money. So how do you find the plan that's right for you? One that fits your needs and your budget. Call Humana now at the number on your screen for this free guide. It's just one of the ways that Humana is making health care simpler. And when you call, a knowledgeable licensed agent producer can answer any questions you have and help you choose the plan that's right for you. The call is free and there's no obligation. You know Medicare won't cover all your medical costs. So call now and see why a Medicare supplement plan from a company like Humana just might be the answer. You know, you know. Wow, yeah. And we got a night for you. Right. TV history is about to happen. Birds. Hey, hey, hey. Animal House come to the Goldbergs. Hey, Eric Stratton, alumni director at Delta House. Damn glad to meet you. Damn glad to meet you. Why are you talking to me? I already have a grandpa. Hey. Yep, Barry's back on an all-new school to cause more trouble. Again? Really? Oh, yeah. And it's all tonight on ABC. Let's go! So here's a, a great voting thing that actually we don't get to do, but this year's nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have been announced, and for the first time, Pat Benatar made the list. Mm -hmm. But she's been eligible for the past 15 years. What took them so long? There's a long list of women. Yeah. Long list of women to get in there, and it's fabulous that she's been nominated. I love it.
I'm voting for Pat. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. yeah. I, um, I love Pat Benatar. Yes. So I'll be voting for her too. But I do think uh, it's important to recognize that only 69 of the 888 inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's just over 7%. It's not, not a lot possible. of a whole bunch of high uh, known, not high known, but well known mm -hmm. uh, rock and roll. Well, Women. When Janet Jackson was inducted last year, she ended her speech saying, like, induct more women. Yes. Um, Gotta so, find them first. Gotta well, get them But, but, but do you know who isn't? Mm -hmm. Just really quick, Whitney Houston, Cher, Melissa Etheridge, Shaka Khan, Cindy Lauper, the Go-Go's. Cher's not in the what? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Whitney yes. Houston's not? Although she's yes. also nominated this year. Yes. So, but in the know. year 2016, well, not a single woman oh, yeah, Shaka Khan. was yeah. even included. In the induction, she also oh, so talks we more about women running for president. Yes, that is true. That is true. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's right. Um, yes. But she talks about the fact that she was pressured; she wasn't rock and roll enough. And you hear this so often well, from the these thing. big What's artists. What's the definition Lady of Gaga rock and said roll? The same thing. Well, for, is, for it, this inductee, because it, if you look at it, Billie Holiday's there, Darlene Love, Donna Summer, Etta James, Nina Simone, The Supremes. When I think of Nina Simone, I think of jazz. Yes, but there's so no jazz Hall of Fame apparently. Right, and so that means there could. Could be a lot more women I mean, no shape in this if Dave you're expanding Matthews the category. Is considered rock and roll. <laughs> I know yeah. there are nominees this year, and I, yeah. too, I like Dave Matthews. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. I just don't consider it hard rock and roll. Yeah, no, it's just uh, when, you think so. about, when you think it's about rock and, and roll, it, it is very fluid. It seems to be very you. fluid when they. <laughs> when they talk about who should be in, yeah. you know? So I think they're trying to figure it out as well. Yeah. Because no one is just one thing anymore. Right. Folks do lots of different kinds of things. True. Well, here's so. example A. Well. You got winner right here. I mean. Well, Megan just read a list of people who could easily be on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if you're gonna, well, yeah. when I look at the list, if you're gonna have, you know, Nina Simone, Supreme, Staple Singers, why not some hip hop artists? Why isn't Queen yeah. Latifah in the Rock in Rock and yeah. Roll Hall of Fame? I'm Why not Lil Kim? See, the, here's you know? the thing. I don't know. This, this What's the definition? conversation. Well, this conversation can go on and on and on. So you got to be glad about who's getting in, and yeah. then you need to write some letters about who you'd like to see in. I'm about because to write I think, some letters. Are you about to write? Some? Well, that's good because <laughs> there's a whole slew of people who should be in there, in yeah. every, in in our opinion, in your opinion, in your opinion, mm -hmm. that aren't considered rock. And roll and so got they're DMC not there. they're not considered I mean, to be they're not considered this so they don't get to play here but they play here but they're not this it's very confusing Fleetwood yeah. Mac was inducted last year and I like absolutely love Fleetwood mm -hmm, Mac mm -hmm. but I really love Stevie Nicks she's from Sedona so I feel like mm -hmm. we have like Arizona sisterhood but and I don't understand why she couldn't have just been inducted on her own because she's a huge artist in her own right mm -hmm. as well so I have a little bit of an issue with that well so but you nominate her. Two women I will. Were, I'll nominate two her. Two women were <laughs> conducted in Fleetwood Mac last year. Yeah. So that is yeah. not a bad thing. And Stevie you know Nicks what? was with Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Who so makes the vote decision? For Pat is it like a group yeah. of people like this that get around no, the table? No, it's and not a group of people like this. You have like to this. support okay. Pat Benatar yeah. from all of us. Clearly not. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a whole group of folks who vote. Musicians. Well, they're doing it wrong who, if only 7% are women. Yeah. Well, Missy Elliott. Salt and pepper. <laughs> Salt and pepper. The same. See, we're going to let them just go on and on. <laughs> MC Light. Just, there you are. TLC. We'll be right back. TLC. Right. 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 Hey there, people eligible for Medicare. Give me one minute, and I'll tell you some important things to know about Medicare. First, it doesn't pay for everything. Say this pizza is your Part B medical expenses. This much, uh, about 80%, Medicare will pay for. What's left is on you. That's where an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company comes in. This type of plan helps pay some of what Medicare doesn't. These are the only plans to carry the AARP endorsement for meeting their high standards of quality and service. So call United Healthcare Insurance Company today and ask for your free decision guide. With this type of plan, you'll have the freedom to choose any doctor who accepts Medicare patients. And when you travel, your plan will go with you anywhere in the country. Phew. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Don't eat them for the 100% whole grain oats. Don't eat them because the oats can help lower cholesterol. Eat them for her. <laughs> No.
NyQuil Severe gives you powerful relief for your worst cold and flu symptoms. On Sunday night and every night. NyQuil Severe, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head, best sleep with a cold medicine. It was love at first slice. Pizza lovers everywhere. We owe that good frozen pizza. One third of our classic crust is made with cauliflower. But that's not stopping anyone. Oh, that's good. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Great tasting Ensure with 9 grams of protein and 27 vitamins and minerals. Ensure for strength and energy. No more paper towels. That's why Sparkle added sheets. They now have 200 more of them bounty per pack. Wish I had 200 more ribs. Marry me. I'm into giants. Mm. Sparkle, now with 200 more sheets per pack. Diarrhea? New Pepto Diarrhea to the rescue. It's three times concentrated liquid formula coats and kills bacteria to relieve diarrhea. The leading competitor only treats symptoms. It does nothing to kill the bacteria. Treat diarrhea at its source with new Pepto Diarrhea. This week on Stray Hit Sarah and Kiki, we've got YouTube sensation James Charles, The Real Housewives of Dallas, and Office Trivia with Jenna and Angela. Lunchtime on ABC. Beautiful fall weather comes to a screeching halt. AccuWeather alert, heavy rain. The Eyewitness News AccuWeather team tracking every move. A safe time to travel. When and where nasty storms will hit. Big, powerful system. AccuWeather team keeps you safe on Channel 7. Eyewitness News. Download the ABC7 NY app for weather alert. I struggled with depression. I thought I needed cigarettes to cope. I was able to quit smoking, and then I started running. Now I feel a lot better. Break your addiction to nicotine. Talk with your health care provider. Everything in life changes, except price for life from Altice. Get Altice One Plus Internet for just $69.99 a month for life. You'll get over 220 channels, 4K Ultra HD, 200 meg internet, and a $100 Amazon.com gift card. Switch careers, same price. Start a family, same price. No matter how life changes, $69.99 will always be $69.99. Call 866-884-6287 or visit Optimum.com today. All Tees One, only at Optimum. It's jaw-dropping, it's eye-popping, it's gut-busting. It's showtime. That's right. The whole world loves Beetlejuice. It's a rowdy, rambunctious, rollicking good time. A big, fantastical funhouse of button-esque magic. Everyone agrees this show is... So good! You've never seen anything quite like... What else do you need to hear? Well, that should do it. Beetlejuice, now on Broadway. Stevie Nicks was inducted to the Hall of Fame separately from Fleetwood Mac, but she deserves everything, so I yes. don't care. Yeah. Everything Stevie Nicks wants, she can have. But let's find out I if Sister Rosetta Thorpe has been uh, inducted. She is really one of the huge mm -hmm. influences on Chuck Berry. And if you don't know who Sister Rosetta Thorpe is, check her out on YouTube. I think you'll be quite surprised. Mm. Now, let me tell you something. Yes, ma'am. A lot of parents, many, 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 many parents, <laughs> use security controls to keep the children from getting into trouble online. But apparently, <laughs> most kids have no problem getting around all that. <laughs> so, A, are you surprised that your kids can actually get around all your parental guidance? Uh, and B... Is it new? Do you think that's a new thing, or have we always gotten around parental oh, guidance? Yes. We've always gotten around <laughs> it. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I, I, I can't really keep, I try to keep up with technology mm -hmm. so that I can figure out what's right. going on. Right. Um, but my kids circumvent it all the time. So you're in the 90s now. Yeah. I'm kind of in the yeah. 90s. Okay. I'm all still I know kind is of in the 90s. We have um, two remote controls for the TV, which is so complicated. You gotta yeah. click about 20 buttons before it turns on. I walked in the other day and my one and a half year old had Peppa Pig on. 
watching yeah. it by herself. Yeah. No idea how she figured that out. <laughs> yeah. No idea. I it's, can't even do so it. I call my husband every day. Now. of like, how do I change the channel? Yeah. They're so, te can't they're it so out. tech savvy now. It's yeah. unbelievable. No. I know, Whoopi, it's a problem. Yeah. It's yeah. a real problem. You know what it, what that is. <laughs> they just get, they're like, look, I've been trying to give you signals. I want to watch I want Peppa, Peppa Pig. I want Peppa Pig. Yeah. I've walked around, and now I know you're just busy, Mom. You got twins. <laughs> Let me put Peppa on myself. Yeah. Yes. They you figure know, it out. Because they know how to do their watching. probably get this, too. Well... I like to think that Charlotte and Aiden haven't figured out how to turn on the television yet, but now I'm thinking I need to go back yeah, and look, go look at the look. monitors to see go whether or not <laughs> that's actually a valid um, assumption. They're sneaky. Yeah. They do it when you're They going. are no. sneaky, but I think that what we, like, we do need better tools as parents mm -hmm. to ensure that we are controlling what particularly yeah. our little kids are watching because we don't want them exposed to things that aren't kind of in the Peppa Pig Watch, watch the app store. Yeah app on your phone yes you'll find that they'll buy things my mom had that with my younger sister she yes. bought like hundreds of dollars of coins for some <laughs> for the in game, in -game, -game play in -game. Yes. No. In -game Parents, you know what i'm talking I've about watch the app yeah. store but when you were growing up it was probably a little hard with secret <laughs> service walking around like did you get away with things I, I wasn't very rebellious, which now oh. I kind of think is sad, actually. <laughs> like, I, I you didn't have much of a choice, I wish so. maybe I had been a little more rebellious. <laughs> it's um, okay, I wish I had been less, so <laughs> why don't we meet someplace in the middle? I have no children, this isn't my problem, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Yet. guys. Yet. <laughs> oh. I don't sit in that chair. Although, so, Chelsea, if you sit yes, in that yeah. chair, you'll get pregnant again. That's the pregnant <laughs> chair. Jasper's no, two and a half months old. Not by me. I just want to be clear. You're not getting pregnant sitting next to me. <laughs> we'll be chair. right back. Just the chair. What happened when Alyssa Milano met face to face with Senator Ted Cruz after their Twitter debate on gun control laws? She's live on The View next. This week on The View, the topics are hotter than ever. So I'm going a, a little bit rogue. We got a hell of a show. Plus, we've got James Bader, Victoria Beckham, and we're closing out the week with a musical performance by Common. I can't wait. It's all this week on The View on ABC. Ever since we moved here, I've been noticing it. I think the house is changing him. Up and at him. Into his father. Is it scary? It's in eco mode, so don't touch it. Mm-hmm. I can't stop this from swinging. There must be draft in here. But he did save a bunch of money bundling our home and auto with Progressive. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Hello. Sorry, honey. Butt dial. So, Bob, what do you take for back pain? Before I take anything, I apply topical pain relievers first. Salon Pass Lidocaine Patch blocks pain receptors for effective non-addictive relief. Salon Pass Lidocaine Patch, roll-on or cream. He sent me to... <laughs> Discover the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. I've got something amazing to show you. Lumify Eye Drops. They're a real game changer when it comes to beautiful looking eyes. Lumify is unlike any other drop out there. Lumify reduces redness so dramatically that it helps your eyes look whiter and brighter for up to eight hours. I had no idea my eyes could look this amazing. Lumify, from the eye care experts at Bausch & Lomb. Give Lumify a try. You won't believe your eyes. Stop struggling to clean tough messes with sprays. Try Clean Freak. It has three times the cleaning power to dissolve kitchen grease on contact. It works great on bathtubs and even stainless steel. Try Clean Freak from Mr. Clean. You know that look? If you that life of the party look. If Walk it off do look. Do it. One more mile look. Reply all look. Own your look with fewer lines. There's only one Botox cosmetic. It's the only one FDA approved to temporarily make frown lines, crow's feet, and forehead lines look better. The effects of Botox cosmetic may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness may be a sign of a life-threatening condition. 
Do not receive Botox Cosmetic if you have a skin infection. Side effects may include allergic reactions, injection site pain, headache, eyebrow, eyelid drooping, and eyelid swelling. Tell your doctor about your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. So give that Just Saw Puppy look. And whatever that look is, look like you with fewer lines. See results at BotoxCosmetic.com. We're going to be late! I'm always a super prepared mom. That's why I trust Culturel Probiotics to make a difference in my kids' digestive and immune health. Found them! Soccer's tomorrow, Mom! I was on the fence about changing from a manual to an electric toothbrush, but my hygienist said going electric could lead to way cleaner teeth. She said get the one inspired by dentists. With the round brush head. Go pro with Oral-B. Oral-B's gentle rounded brush head removes more plaque along the gum line for cleaner teeth and healthier gums. And unlike Sonicare, Oral-B is the first electric toothbrush brand accepted by the ADA for its effectiveness and safety. What an amazing clean. I'll only use an Oral-B. Oral-B. Brush like a pro. I'm Sandra Bookman. Next on Eyewitness News at noon, two fire trucks crash into each other while responding to a call in Brooklyn injuring a pedestrian. We'll have the latest. Plus, disruptive weather on the way. Get ready for heavy rain and possible street flooding. Next live, Haley Steinfeld, Insatiable's Debbie Ryan, Natasha Bedingfield, and October 31st. It's live's Halloween show. Watch live tomorrow morning at 9 on ABC7. One comedy is all about confidence. It's important that you go to this party and you feel good about who you are. And they're confident they don't belong. Can't take our shirts off at yeah. the smoke show. Okay, my grandma was right. I ended up in hell. New Modern Family, tonight on ABC. Activist Alyssa Milano has spoken out powerfully on issues like sexual assault, gun control laws, and a woman's right to choose. And now she's teaching the next generation how powerful their voices can be in her new children's book, Hope Project Middle School. Please welcome Alyssa Milano. <laughs> Issues. I know. Very high. I'm very high. Hi, everyone. No. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we were talking about last night on yes. television, and you saw the debates, did you? What I you did. Thought? I actually thought it was the best debate so far, and mm. I thought that they got some really substantial issues out there. Everyone, you know, made their case. Mm. I was happy to hear people talk about infrastructure because it's a huge, yes, huge. Yeah. Not a sexy issue, but a huge issue for our country. And a bipartisan I mean, one. Yes, yeah. and it pulls really well. But we have pipes underground that are over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. so when Including you here in New York City. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. when you think about that, it's... Oh, good. We need to... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> drink up. Drink your water. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, I was happy to hear that. I was happy to hear people talk about income inequality, which I think is a mm -hmm. really, maybe the most important issue that we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. So I was happy with it. I thought it was great. Look, our bench is really stacked. Yeah. Um, they're all kind of rock stars, and it's nice to, to be able to support that and be proud of your candidates yeah. for your party. So one of my dear close friends is like, hashtag king of the Yang Yang, hi Ty. Mm -hmm. And he literally <laughs> wanted me to ask you, he was like, oh, I think she likes Yang. When he I asked, love he like, him. Can you tell me why? I can, hashtag actually. Math. <laughs> well, yes, I think, um, I think he has, first of all, changed the narrative. We were talking about things in that debate last night that are specifically because Andrew Yang has brought that up. Um, I like the fact that he says, talking about his freedom dividend, that he says, look, all of these tech companies are actually mining our data for free. We're giving up every single search, every phone call we make, every purchase. We are giving up our data and we're getting nothing in return. Uh -huh. So the freedom dividend, if we look at it like that, like we're actually getting paid for them mining our data. Yeah, I think it's really, really smart. It lifts people out of poverty. The poverty level is $12,000 in this country a year. 
So if you're giving people a thousand dollars a month, that's twelve thousand dollars more. So that's twenty-four thousand dollars a year, which I think is great. And it's changing the conversation, and I think that's really important. So I'm not officially Yang Gang, but I'm like, yeah, you know, Jason, Yang, Yang, Yang. yeah, Jason, yeah. <laughs> Yang Gang, Jason. Does he really have a shot at becoming the candidate and becoming the president? Um, I'm not thinking of any of them like that right now. Okay. And I think we get in a really dangerous place when we set our minds so early on candidates. Mm -hmm. I'm collecting information and trying to be an educated voter. Right. And I feel like the longer we we wait between when we make our decision to the to the to the day we vote, that's when things get really like uh, passionate and and too ugly. Mm -hmm. Cuz then we start the infighting and the yeah. splintering off. And that's why like I, I haven't endorsed anybody because yeah, mm -hmm. what what does it do for for any of us? I, I think everyone needs to go in there and make up their minds, educate themselves, mm -hmm. and then vote for, from their heart. And, and we don't early. have to know. I don't, I don't have to know. It's early. Yeah, it's our, early. Our primary so in New York is six months away. Yes, yeah, so yeah. much can happen. Six months away. Now and then. So I want to switch gears um, to your podcast called Sorry Not Sorry. Yes. Um, and yesterday Great marked title. the two-year anniversary of the Me Too hashtag, mm -hmm. um, and you helped that to go viral. Um, but yesterday, uh, you told, I'm sorry, on Monday, you told the story for the first time on the podcast about being sexually assaulted on a movie set. Yes. This is the first time you've told that story. What made you want to tell the story now? I think for a lot of reasons. First of all, I think... And you're think, very brave for telling that story, by the way. Thank you. Um, I think it's very, I think it's important for us in, in positions where we can uh, speak on a platform to show that... Coming to terms with this and discussing these these issues of sexual assault are very hard, and they take a lot of years. I mean, this has been 25 years. This is yeah. 25 years ago, and so so much goes into the thought of admitting this, not only to the world but to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've never really been ready for that, where I'm ready to go inside my own soul and deal with my own sexual assault. And mm -hmm. the beautiful thing that happened for me too is that I have women from all over the world who see me and come over to me mm -hmm. and share their stories of sexual assault. And they have given me the courage to, to not share only share my stories, but to, to dive deep inside myself and figure out what that means to heal and to grow and to continue on the path of moving this movement forward so that we can ensure that our children's generation of, of women and, and men who are sexually assaulted never have to deal with this again. Mm -hmm. And so part of this for me was very personal, yeah. but also what I felt like I needed to do for the women that have um, shared their stories with me. Yeah. And whoever did that, he knows who he is. The person's he name. knows who he is, mm -hmm. and he now knows you're out talking about this because he's in the industry. People probably know who he is. You don't want to say his name. You're, you said you're wrestling with I that. I was Why? so close to saying his name, and my monologue that I wrote at the end of the podcast where, where, I, where I come to terms with this, in the original copy, I actually said his name. But I got so scared, and I think a lot of women can relate to this, mm -hmm. that when we confront our abusers that we don't want to ruin their lives and their livelihoods because it's really hard. This man has a family. He has children. He has a successful job. And maybe it was 25 years ago. Maybe he's gotten therapy and, and, and I just, I wasn't ready to um, accuse him and have that blow up. And also the good people on the set that dealt with that at that time, like then they would be confronted with having to talk about it in the press. And it just became so overwhelming that I was like, this is what I can do right now. And this is it. And maybe at some other point I can do more, mm -hmm. but right now this is what I can can do okay. and you made that decision for yourself and I made that decision Which I think in my own time in your own and time by the way, for your own self that's what me too is all about mm -hmm. and the hashtag it doesn't you don't have to name your accuser you don't have to say exactly what happened to you you just have to stand in solidarity with other women that have faced this horrible reality what well, and I think you're doing this also to role model for younger people who are watching this play out exactly. in real time and thinking then about kind of what would be right for themselves and their own lives and what they're willing to accept and not accept. 
but you're also doing this in a format that I think is really important through your new children's book. Thank um, you. And Thank you. I read it <laughs> over the weekend and Thank I you. loved it. Thank you. Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, poor Charlotte is going to have to navigate like friendship dynamics soon. Yeah. I um, know. Well, but middle school is really a, 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 an age that we never talk about. It's, it's a tough rough time. age. So why did you write time. this book and why did you kind of put it in a sixth grader's eyes? Okay. Well, I think that children have the most innate ability to be compassionate and empathetic. And they just do it. It's part of their nature. It's part of who they are. And somewhere along the lines, and maybe it's through middle school when everything becomes very about your own personal growth and what yeah. do people think about me, we lose that. And you learn and, hate. And you learn hate you, and you, you learn you're ugliness of people and, and, and you feel other than sometimes yes. and what does... So I wanted it to take place in middle school because I felt like it was so important to give those kids a voice yeah. and to teach them to use their own voices. And that girls can do that. And, and that girls yes. can do that, of and course. You know what? You're always welcome at the table, as you Thank know. Thank you. Yeah. This is lots of fun. Our thanks to Alyssa Milano. Her new book, Hope Project Middle School, is out now. And you know what, y'all? You're so good. Yeah. You're so <laughs> kind. We're giving you a copy of Yay! this. Yes. Is that why you think you do it? For the money? It's the game. It's the adrenaline rush. What if it is? And we're tickety boo. Becoming a very good liar. The Good Liar. Rated R. Fine. No one leaves the table till you're finished. Fine. We'll sleep here. It's the easiest because it's the cheesiest. Craft for the win-win. Unexpected situation? <laughs> L'Oreal's Magic Root Cover-Up. Three seconds to flawless roots. Three, two, one. Roots gone. Magic Root Cover-Up by L'Oreal Paris. Look for the turquoise one. We took lifelong pasta experts and gave one prego traditional and one ragu traditional. This is what happened. That's because even ragu users prefer the taste of prego traditional. Like peach fuzz on my face, I've had sideburns. I know people notice it and it just makes me feel uncomfortable and insecure. I love flawless. This is the only way that I've been able to get that flawless, smooth look with my makeup. It's so easy to use. You just turn it on and make little circles and no hair. I just feel really pretty and feminine and I'm confident. I can just so fast use this, boom, done. Flawless. Flawless. Don't put on your makeup without it. Ariana's not just going to school. She's going to school with a lunch she helped pack herself. Because she's becoming an independent child! Yo Play for fueling independence for big little wins. Managing type 2 diabetes? Audrey's on it. Eating right and staying active? On it. Audrey thinks she's doing all she can to manage her type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But is her treatment doing enough to lower her heart risk? Maybe not. Jardians can reduce the risk of cardiovascular death for adults who also have known heart disease. So it could help save your life from a heart attack or stroke. And it lowers A1C. Jardians can cause serious side effects including dehydration, genital yeast or urinary tract infections, and sudden kidney problems. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may be fatal. A rare but life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. Do not take Jardians if you are on dialysis or have severe kidney problems. Taking Jardians with a sulfonuria or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Lower A1C and lower risk of a fatal heart attack? On it with Jardians. Ask your doctor about Jardians. Fact. Coffee stains teeth. Unlike ordinary whitening toothpaste, Colgate Optic White has hydrogen peroxide that goes below the tooth surface for a smile that's four shades visibly whiter. Colgate Optic White, whitening that works. 
Ashley Home Store's lowest prices of the year sale is going on now. Hurry in and find big savings on hundreds of items or get 0% interest for 72 months. The lowest prices of the year have arrived only at Ashley Home Store. This is home. Did you know that feeling sluggish or weighed down could be signs that your digestive system isn't working at its best? Taking Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil supports your daily digestive health using a special plant-based fiber called psyllium. Psyllium works by forming a gel in your digestive system to trap and remove the waste that weighs you down. Metamucil's gelling action also helps to lower cholesterol and slows sugar absorption to promote healthy blood sugar levels. So start feeling lighter and more energetic by taking Metamucil every day. Hey, tonight! I totally Kool-Aid man through your wall. Let's get the right tools. It's Demolition Day. Pick up a hammer, get your butt in the kitchen. See, now I'm sorry I'm here. New single parents, ABC Tonight. So, Chelsea, you know, also, you're welcome to come back and join us anytime Thank you. we have you. Thank you. you. We want everybody to celebrate today. It doesn't matter what you celebrate. Just have a little celebration. And have a great day to everybody. And take a little time to enjoy the view. This is New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News with David Navarro and Shirley Nalikot and Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Now, Eyewitness News at noon. Two fire trucks collide on the way to an emergency call in Brooklyn. Nearly a dozen firefighters and a pedestrian hurt. We look into what went wrong. And two police involved shootings just hours apart. Gunfire on a subway platform in the Bronx and a deadly shooting in Brooklyn. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Bookman. In today for Shirley and Alicott. I'm David Navarro. We'll get to those Long stories in a moment. But we begin with the AccuWeather alert and brace for downpours. Really, the rain really may, so may so not be light right brave. now, but it, it will get so a whole much, lot heavier as the day goes on. Sam Champion is in the Weather Center, and he right. is There's cracking on a coming storm. Book, Sam, it is so again, 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 I hope you guys Good afternoon, everyone. So let's show you where the rain is right now and what you can expect out of this over the next couple of hours. You can see we're just now beginning in the loop to get the showers into western New Jersey. Also, I want you to follow this heavy rain that's leaving Washington, D.C. and getting into South Jersey right now. So you put that about two and a half to three hours away from crossing the city. And we do have just a few watches and warnings that are out there right now. So as we watch it, we've got the flash flood watch, we've got a wind advisory. These areas in Brown on the Jersey Shore also. This Could there be a big announcement at the table? Plus, she's the actress and activist who helped ignite the Me Too movement. Alyssa Milano on how she's showing the next generation it's never too early to voice your view. Here come Hot Topics with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sunny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. She happened to be walking past. <laughs> and she said, well, let me go in and see how these girls are doing. <laughs> Joining us as guest co-host today, please welcome okay. activist and co-author of the book, Gutsy Women, and pretty good girl, woman, in her own right, <laughs> Chelsea Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, before... Yeah. Yes. They love you. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it, listen, we're glad to see everybody. <laughs> we are. We're glad everybody comes out. Because yeah. you don't have to come to us. You could go to another yeah. show. And you came to us. So yay for y'all. <laughs> yeah. We have to start by asking, because apparently there are rumors that you are considering running uh, for Congress. Now that... Oh. Uh, Nita Lowry, Congresswoman Nita Lowry, is not seeking re-election. Is that rumor? Is it a, are you thinking about it? Or? I'm not considering running for Congresswoman okay. Lowry. No, why um, not? Oh. That 
Oh, well, thank you, honey. Oh, gosh, thank you. Um, you know, but, Whoopi, I understand why people are asking, and someone has asked me some version of this question for literally as long yes. as I can remember. I don't know, yeah. Abby's nodding. Like, one of my earliest memories is being three or four, and someone saying, like, Chelsea, you're gonna run for governor of Arkansas one day. <laughs> and, you know, I share that because I think it's a question that shouldn't just be asked of people whose last name is Clinton or Hutzman. It's a question we should be asking kids, like, do you think about running for office one day? Young people, women. And I hope that if the answer to that question is, yes, I'm considering it, that you'll really think about doing it and go to run right. for something and other resources that exist to help you do that. Do you think you ever will? I don't know, but right now the answer's no. Oh, all right. You just had a baby. I just had a baby. Three kids. Uh, Three kids. Did you, did you get any sleep last night? I actually got the most sleep last night that I've gotten since Jasper was born. Good. Oh, I slept that's a good night. Almost seven hours. That's a good night. Yes, ma'am. Enjoy <laughs> no. today while it lasts. I mean, I feel like I have superpowers because I got a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> There's some disappointed people in the audience, but it's okay. Yeah. One, have day, to wait. one day you might. You never Maybe. know. Yeah. Maybe, but not now. Well, there's a lot of not disappointing things happening. Happened last night, apparently, on television. Mm -hmm. And as the Democrats met in Ohio for the fourth presidential debate, and the biggest target, apparently, of the night was Senator Elizabeth Warren. Take a look. Costs will go up for the wealthy, they will go up for big corporations, and for middle class families, they will go down. I will not sign a bill into law that does not lower costs for middle class families. At least Bernie's being honest here and saying how he's going to pay for this and that taxes are going to go up. And I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but you have not said that. And I think we owe it to the American people to tell them where we're going to send the invoice. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. Okay. I agreed with the great job she did and I went on the floor and got you votes. I got votes for that bill. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I guess they think Elizabeth is the one to, to uh, beat right now. Did she, did she hold her own? I thought she was terrific, actually. You know, she she is the lady with the plan. It's clear that she is obviously the front runner, at least in their minds, because that's why she was under attack so much. She never lost her cool. She didn't lose her pacing. I think that's what you need to do in a debate. Um, she had the most time speaking. She spoke for 22 minutes and 32 seconds, yeah. as opposed to, let's right. say, Kamala Booker, uh, Kamala Harris, rather, who it spoke happens. for 12, 12 24, mm -hmm. and Booker spoke for 11, 19. So, I mean, you know, she, had, she took up, up the majority of the time. Um, I think it was a misstep, though, with the, her Medicare for All um, plan, because we know she's the lady with the plan, but she's not really explaining how she's going to pay for it, and yeah. they pounced on her for that. Time and time again. And time I actually time give, again. I give Mayor Pete, uh, and I think Amy Klobuchar, uh, kudos. Mayor Pete, who I've liked from the beginning, but I thought last night was his best performance yet. He came out swinging. He's in that moderate lane. Uh, Klobuchar's there, but Biden also... But he delivers what Biden is saying, I think, so much better. He's a great debater. And so if you were just reading this debate, the transcript, and you didn't know their age, you didn't know what they looked like, you didn't know much about them, I think the, 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 the way that people would, were polling today would be very different. I think the way we'd be talking about them would be very different. Mm -hmm. His numbers in, in fundraising as well is, yeah. uh, you look at his campaign coffers, he has 23.3 million compared to Biden, who has 8.9. Money they can spend right now in their campaign. Does money speaks. Plan. Listen, money speaks, but, he, but, but, he but had, BS walks. He hit back on plan, one. And just because you got money doesn't mean you have He does have, have a plan. And wh plan. what I like about him is he says, let's live in reality. If you want to win this election, you've got to give people a choice. So what has he said that, so he's saying that on got health you fired care, up? For example, you, he's all for, like, let's find better health care and more options for people. But you can't tell the American people, you can't, you don't have a choice in this. He also had a great moment with Beto O'Rourke on guns when Beto said, I'm going to go in people's homes and take people's guns. He huh? said, you, this is a purity test. Mm -hmm. That's never going to pass. So let's live in reality once again. I think that is, that is the way to beat Trump. Mm -hmm. If you go so far to the left and say, we're going to live in this world that's never going to exist, you're not going to get people in the middle. Yeah. They're going to have no option but to maybe vote for Trump again. Uh -huh. That's what's going to happen. Well, if that's the only option for people in the middle, then it's not the middle. Amen. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not the middle. If that's the only option. Mm -hmm. What do you think?
Oh, I have many things to say. Last night I was live tweeting it because there's only so much time in these segments. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, uh, I thought Warren did a terrible job and she was on her heels all night and it showed she just how be. vulnerable she actually she is. We want you to face it, I disagree. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but I'm watching it as a Republican. You're watching it as a far left progressive. I say that with respect to you. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. Who scored the biggest hits and who needs to step aside? And guest co host Chelsea Clinton is giving her post debate wrap up and taking on rumors she wants to run for Congress. Could there be a big announcement at the table? Plus, she's the actress and activist who helped ignite the Me Too movement. Alyssa Milano on how she's showing the next generation it's never too early to voice your view. Let's go! Here come hot topics with Whoopi. Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. She happened to be walking past. <laughs> and she said, well, let me go in and see how these girls are doing. <laughs> Joining us as guest co-host today, please welcome okay. activist and co-author of the book, Gutsy Women, and pretty good girl, woman, in her own right, <laughs> Chelsea Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, before... Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, listen, we're glad to see everybody. We are. We're glad everybody comes out. Because yeah. you don't have to come to us. You could go to another yeah. show and you came to us. So yay for y'all. <laughs> yeah. We have to start by asking, because apparently there are rumors that you are considering running uh, for Congress. Now that... Oh. Um, Nita Lowry, Congresswoman Nita Lowry, is not seeking re-election. Is that rumor? Is it? A, are you thinking about it? Or? I'm not considering running for Congresswoman okay. Lowry. No, why not? Oh, that oh, kid. Well, thank you, Sunny. Oh gosh, thank Look you. Um, you know, but Whoopi, I understand why people are asking, mm -hmm. and some one has asked me some version of this question for literally as long yes. as I can remember. I don't know. Abby's nodding. Mm -hmm. Like one of my earliest memories is being three or four and someone saying like, Chelsea, you're going to run for governor of Arkansas one day. <laughs> and, you know, I share that because I think it's a question that shouldn't just be asked of people whose last name is Clinton or Hutzman. It's a question we should be asking kids. Like, do you think about running for office one day? Young people, women. And I hope that if the answer to that question is, yes, I'm considering it, that you'll really think about doing it and go to run right. for something and other resources that exist to help you do that. Do you think you ever will? I don't know. But right now the answer is no. Okay. All right. You just had a baby. I just had a baby. Three kids. Uh, Three kids. Did you, did you get any sleep last night? I actually got the most sleep last night that I've gotten since Jasper was born. Good. Oh, I slept that's a good night. Almost seven hours. That's a good night. Yes, ma'am. Enjoy <laughs> no. today while well left. I mean, I feel like I have superpowers because I got a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> There's some disappointed people in the audience, but it's okay. Yeah. One, have day, to one day you might. You never Maybe. know. Yeah. Maybe, but not now. Well, there's a lot of not disappointing things happening. Happened last night, apparently, on television. Mm -hmm. And as the Democrats mm -hmm. met in Ohio for the fourth presidential debate, and the biggest target, apparently, of the night was Senator Elizabeth Warren. Take a look. Costs will go up for the wealthy, they will go up for big corporations, and for middle class families, they will go down. I what will not money? sign a bill into law that does not lower costs for middle class families. At least Bernie's being honest here and saying how he's going to pay for this and that taxes are going to go up. And I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but you have not said that. And I think we owe it to the American people to tell them where we're going to send the invoice. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. Okay. I agreed with 
the great job she did. And I went on the floor and got you votes. I got votes for that bill. Well, okay. <laughs> Clearly, I guess they think Elizabeth is the one to, to uh, beat right now. Did she, did she hold her own? I thought she was terrific, actually. You know, she she is the lady with the plan. It's clear that she is obviously the front runner, at least in their minds, because that's why she was under attack so much. She never lost her cool. She didn't lose her pacing. I think that's what you need to do in a debate. Um, she had the most time speaking. She spoke for 22 minutes and 32 seconds, yeah. as opposed to, let's what? say, Kamala Booker, uh, Kamala Harris, rather, who it spoke happens. for 1224, 12 12 and Booker spoke for 1119. So, I mean, you know, she, had, she took up, up the majority of the time. Um, I think it was a misstep, though, with the, her Medicare for All um, plan, because we know she's the lady with the plan, but she's not really explaining how she's going to pay for it, and yeah. they pounced on her for that. Time and time again. And time I actually time give, again. I give Mayor Pete, uh, and I think Amy Klobuchar, uh, kudos. Mayor Pete, who I've liked from the beginning, but I thought last night was his best performance yet. He came out swinging. He's in that moderate lane. Uh, Klobuchar's there, but Biden also... But he delivers what Biden is saying, I think, so much better. He's a great debater. And so if you were just reading this debate, the transcript, and you didn't know their age, you didn't know what they looked like, you didn't know much about them, I think the, 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 the way that people would, were polling today would be very different. I think the way we'd be talking about them would be very different. Mm -hmm. His numbers in, in fundraising as well is, yeah. uh, you look at his campaign coffers, he has 23.3 million compared to Biden, who has 8.9. Money they can spend right now in their campaign. Does money speaks. Plan. Listen, money speaks, but, he, but, but, he but been, BS walks. He hit back on plan, one. And just because you got money doesn't mean he you have He does have, have a plan. And wh plan. what I like about him is he says, let's live in reality. If you want to win this election, you've got to give people a choice. So what has he said that, so he's saying that on got you fired care, for example, you, He's all for, like, let's find better health care yeah. and more options for people. But you can't tell the American people, you can't, you don't have a choice in this. He also had a great moment with Beto O'Rourke on guns when Beto said, I'm going to go in people's homes and take People's guns. He huh? said, you, this is a purity test. Mm -hmm. That's never going to pass. So let's live in reality once again. I think that is, that is the way to beat Trump. Huh? If you go so far to the left and say, we're going to live in this world that's never going to exist, you're not going to get people in the middle. Yeah. They're going to have no option but to maybe vote for Trump again. Uh -huh. That's what's going to happen. Well, if that's the only option for people in the middle, then it's not the middle. Amen. <laughs> that's not the middle if that's the only option. Uh -huh. What do you think? Oh, I have many things to say. Last night I was live tweeting it because there's only so much time in these segments. Mm -hmm. um, I will say uh, I thought Warren did a terrible job and she was on her heels all night and it showed just how vulnerable she actually is. We watch it. I disagree. Yeah but, yeah, but I'm watching it as a Republican. You're watching it as That's a true. far left progressive. I say that with respect to you. Oh, I'm not a far left um, progressive at all. Actually. Compared to me, you are. Compared to everybody in this room, it is. It's fine. But I will say um, I thought I actually thought Mayor Pete came out swinging really hard and I mm -hmm. thought it was quite impressive. I don't know what Beto's doing other than running for MSNBC host coming up. I'm sure he'll get a good hour. Tom, that's right. Tom Steyer's Christmas tie was deeply distracting the entire time. And I want to say Andrew Yang brought up the topic of automation. The only reason why we're talking about automation is because an entrepreneur from New York, not from California, messed that up when he was on here, brought it to the forefront, and he had a way better answer than Elizabeth Warren did. Hmm. And also, I think, uh, you know, it's one of the things that people slammed your mom about because people forget that, you know, it's not immigrants coming over and taking your jobs away. Your jobs are being phased out. They are being yeah. done by uh, machines. So let's be realistic about what's going on and, and find ways to get people, to encourage people to find new ways of of moving your life ahead when, you know, because we've seen it happen when automation comes in, a lot of stuff disappears. But we'll be at least on the Democratic stage those were issues that were being discussed, yeah, right? At yeah, least, yeah. like, gun violence was discussed. At least opioids were discussed. Mm -hmm. At least universal health care was discussed. And not treated as a pipe dream, but treated as something that has to become reality in our country. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, like, just the contrast to Republicans, with all due respect, I could not have been more clear you because of my what we were talking about <laughs> right. last right. night. And I like that we had this dynamic, strong conversation. Can I ask so, I'm, so, it, it I'm is supposed a, you're right to say that. that uh, do you want this thing? I mean, what is it? It's a, the, a moment well, from last night that you all were talking about this morning and you, Chelsea, were talking about it. Take a look.
We are seeing all over this country women's reproductive rights under attack, and God bless Kamala, but you know what? Women should not be the only ones taking up this cause and this fight. And then it is not just because women are our daughters and our friends and our wives. It's because women are people, and people deserve to control their own body. So that okay. was kind of a special moment, I thought, last night, because so often, with all due respect to the men in the audience, mm -hmm. when women's rights are discussed, men often start with, as a father of a daughter, mm. or as the son of a mother, mm -hmm. or as the brother to a sister, or as a husband to my wife. No! It shouldn't matter. Like, our human rights are our human rights, and those should be respected and protected and advanced because we're human beings, not yeah. because of your relationship to a woman in your own life. And I was so, so, so grateful that he made that point so strongly last night. Yeah. He did. That's a good that point. He also said point. as a vegan at one point, and I was like, you got the vegan point locked and loaded. Right. You got it. I, I was like, I don't know what that has to do with anything. I don't need I'll ask both <laughs> But why won't Elizabeth Warren answer the question on whether or not the middle class will have their taxes raised with the Medicare for All? Because she's very good at spinning. I think they're going to be raised, and I think they're going to save. Sanders said it. They're going to save money by, let's say, perhaps not having the insurance premiums that so many of us have when we go to the doctor. So but perhaps why not they'll have more money. In their pockets, but I think you have to. If you look at the breadth and depth of her of her plan, the money has to probably come from taxing the middle class as well. I, I think that's just Republican the truth. She point. can take some of that money, that trillion dollars that Amazon yeah. is sitting on. Yeah. Well, that's what she was saying I, initially. Well, no, I know. You know, the only that one anymore. that said it is Andrew Yang, and I still don't understand why. That idea of trillion dollar companies, which is something we've never had in this kind of, that we've never had in the company before. Well, you know what? Let me shut up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Still ahead, Alyssa Milano on why she decided it was time to reveal her sexual assault nightmare on a movie set. Hi, so welcome back. So I'm going to finish making my point. I'm going to try to make it more succinct than I was doing. In 2018, 60 Fortune 500 companies paid zero federal income tax, according to the Institute of Taxation and Shameful. Economic Policy. Companies like Amazon, Delta, Chevron. Amazon became a trillion dollar company last year. Yeah. The idea that I don't mind. See, I don't mind if you're not paying your taxes because you've built this amazing company. This is still America where we say you can come here and build a company. I'm all for that. But if you're making a trillion, if you're a trillion dollar company, we should be benefiting from that as people who are a maybe part of families whose companies have been closed because you've opened this gigantic thing that's okay i don't mind that you're making money i like making money but when you become a trillion dollar company you need to pass some of that on and that two cents that you want to take from me after all the taxes that i'm paying for your phone tax you don't know what your phone tax is for do you, you don't know what any of those taxes are for. Mm -hmm. You're traveling on the highways, you're paying uh, a toll. You're paying taxes just to stay here. I want some of that money back, and I want it from the places where we spend a lot of money, and those are those big companies. That's what I want them to tell, because people can't send their kids to camp, because they can't write anything off now. I don't like that. It was a, that little bit of money that you got back was something you could you could look forward to. I mean, my kid was like, February's coming, I'm gonna get that check. Yeah, you know, it doesn't happen anymore. February came, no check. She was mad. <laughs> she was really because it's that you know I don't have to do everything for. Her. That's the money she deals with her grandkids with. She can do what she needs to do, and that money's gone. Yeah. So if you if we're just working to pay taxes for stuff that isn't helping us. I don't see why we can't dip and get some of that. Well, I think all of the candidates have mentioned that they're going to roll back a lot of the Republican tax mm -hmm. code. That, Thank the, you, the one that was The one that was just... Yeah, he, uh, he was good on that last that night. Was, that, that was changed. Mm -hmm. That was a huge topic last yeah. night. That was like a 30-minute right. part of the debate was just the size of these companies and what they're each going to do. And then it went into some uh, strange back and forth about yeah. whether Trump's Twitter account should be deleted. Yeah, but I think the funny point is a really good one, right? Is that one of the reasons this is such an acute conversation is not only do we have companies paying a lot of money to avoid paying taxes, mm -hmm. which I think is shameful, um, but we're also living in a reality where the Trump administration 
with the Republicans in Congress slashed corporate tax rates, right? right? And not only are they not paying their fair share, Whoopi, you know, they're not helping to be the world kind of that we want, I think, all our kids to grow up in. Yeah. Help paying for clean water, paying for good yeah. infrastructure, yeah. paying for they universal health care. Yes. They could be much better corporate citizens. Yeah, they could be much better corporate citizens. That's the way they themselves are going to benefit. That's a Republican idea. Anyway, just the, the idea that companies should give so much more back to society. In the sense that, like, you know, for example, like my grandpa created a company, and he gave basically all of his money back to building a cancer hospital. Uh -huh. Do what you can in your community, in your uh -huh. environment, to help the people around you, to help the people yeah. that you serve. Well, that's generally the, the, the notion, right? The Republican notion. And maybe you can speak to it better, but that the corporations are given these tax, uh, these tax cuts because they think then they're going to hire more people. There'll be more jobs. They're going to put it, you know, back into the community. That I don't happen. see that happening. Yeah. That it seems like happen. people are just reinvesting in their own and companies, buying back, buying back their stock, and not necessarily investing in the communities where they're open opening up stores, not raising uh, salaries for people in their companies. So I don't know why that is still the notion, about, yeah. but, wow. but that doesn't ones seem that, to that, work. We that shouldn't trust them just to do that, just, right? Yeah. That's why we need to have higher taxes on them so that it is expected of yeah. them that yeah. they then do that. And somebody said age came up yesterday, is that correct? It did, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I, I you they know, asked, they, I, it, it was... Um, uh, Aaron that asked a question, mm -hmm. kept on asking questions about Bernie's heart attack, then w went to, I think we have a clip, but then she went to Elizabeth Warren and she also went to uh, Biden, mm -hmm. but didn't necessarily ask the younger folks on, on the about stage. There's, there's a clip they're telling me in my uh, ear. Okay. Let me invite you all to a major rally we're having in Queens, New York. That is how I think I can reassure the American people. One of the reasons I am running is because of my age and my experience. With it comes wisdom. I will outwork, outorganize, and outlast anyone, uh, and that includes Donald Trump. Trump, Mike Pence, or whoever the Republicans get stuck with. <laughs> They clearly were all very vibrant mm -hmm. uh, last night. And just again, like the juxtaposition to Trump, when he ran, we knew nothing about his health. Right. He still discloses. Remember that doctor? No. Yeah. No, doctor, doctor, doctor that said he was like, he doctor. Doctor. the handwritten yes. note. Yeah. And oh, now, you know, we still know very little about his health from his official. And he's 73 exam. as well. So it, it makes me so very upset, though, because hair, I, I do think there was such an emphasis, at least for me at the time when my dad was running. He literally had to have uh, journalists go to Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. to go through to the point that like mm. he apparently had a mole on his back that was removed that I didn't even know about and there was an absolute obsession with his health yeah. and if my dad had had a heart attack mid campaign people be screaming bloody murder so I don't I am not ageist I don't you, you could be a hundred my grandma's 108 she could run this country better than Trump period <laughs> so I don't have a problem with age but I would like to know I think everyone should be in the same way release your taxes yeah. I think you should release your health records as well yeah. and there you go we'll be back Thank you. great voting thing that actually we don't get to do, but this year's nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have been announced, and for the first time, Pat Benatar made the list. Mm -hmm. But she's been eligible for the past 15 years. What took them so long? There's a long list of women. Yeah. Long list of women to get in there, and it's fabulous that she's been nominated. I love it. I'm voting for Pat. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I love Pat Benatar, yes. so I'll be voting for her too, but I do think uh, it's important to recognize that only 69 of the 888 inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's just over 7%. It's that's not a lot of, a whole bunch of high uh, known, not high known, but well known mm -hmm. uh, rock and roll well, women. When Janet Jackson was inducted last year, she ended her speech saying, like, induct more women. Yes. Um, Gotta so, find them first. Gotta well, get well, well, wait, wait, But do you know roll. who isn't? Mm -hmm. Just really quick, Whitney Houston, Cher, Melissa Etheridge, Shaka Khan, Cindy Lauper, the Go-Go's. Cher's not in the what? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Whitney yes. Houston's not? Although she's yes. also nominated this year. Yes. So, but in the know. year 2016, well, not a single mm -hmm. woman oh, yeah, Shaka Khan, was yeah. even included in the induction. She also, also talks more about... women running for president yes, in 16. That is true. That's right.
she talks about the fact that she was pressured she wasn't rock and roll enough and you hear this so often well, from the these thing. big artists What's the definition Lady Gaga of rock and said roll? the same thing well, for, it's, for it's, this inductee because if you look at it Billie Holiday's there Darlene Love Donna Summer Etta James Nina Simone the Supremes when I think of Nina Simone I think of jazz yes but there's so no jazz hall of fame apparently right and so that means there could be a lot more women I mean, no shame in this if Dave you're expanding Matthews the category is considered rock and roll I know I there are nominated this year and I yeah. I like Dave Matthews, yeah. whatever. I just don't consider it hard rock and roll. Yeah, no, it's just, uh, when, you think about, when you think <laughs> about rock and roll, it, it is very fluid. It seems to be very win. fluid when they <laughs> when they talk about who should be in. Yeah. You know, so I think they're trying to figure it out as well. Yeah. Because no one is just one thing anymore. Right. Folks do lots of different kinds of things. True. Well, here's so. example A. <laughs> Well, you got winner right here. I mean, well, Megan just read a list of people who could easily be yeah. inducted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're gonna, well, yeah. When I look at the list, if you're gonna have, you know, Nina Simone, Supreme, Staple Singers, why not some hip hop artists? Why isn't Queen yeah. Latifah in the Rock and Rock and yeah. Roll Hall of Fame? Why not Lil Kim? See, the, here's you know, the thing. I don't know. The, this What's the definition? conversation. Well, this conversation can go on and on and on. So you got to be glad about who's getting in, and yeah. then you need to write some letters about who you'd like to. See it. I'm about because to write I some think, letters. Are you about to write some? Well, that's good. Because there's a whole slew of people who should be in there, in, yeah. ev in, in our opinion, in your opinion, in your opinion, mm -hmm, yeah. that aren't considered rock and roll. Because you've so got Run DMC not, there. They're not considered I mean, to be. They're not considered this, so they don't get to play here, but they play here, but they're not this. It's very confusing. Fleetwood yeah. Mac was inducted last year, and I, I like absolutely love Fleetwood mm -hmm, Mac, mm -hmm. but I really love Stevie Nicks. She's from Sedona, so I feel like mm -hmm. we have, like, Arizona sisterhood. But and I don't understand why she couldn't have just been inducted on her own, because she's a huge artist in her own right mm -hmm. as well, so I have a little bit of an issue with that. Well, so... But you nominate her. Two women I will. Were, I'll nominate two her. Two women were <laughs> inducted in Fleetwood Mac last year. Yeah. yeah. So that is yeah. not a bad thing. And Stevie you know Nicks was with Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Who so makes the decision? Is it like a group yeah. of people like this that get around no, the table? No, it's and not a group of people like this. You have to support Pat Benatar from all of us. Clearly not. <laughs> no, it's a it's a whole group of folks who vote. Musicians. Well, they're doing it wrong are, if only seven percent are women. Yeah. Well, Missy Elliott. Salt and pepper. <laughs> Salt and pepper. The same. See, we're gonna let them just go on and on. <laughs> MC Light. Just, there you are. TLC. We'll be right back. TLC. Stevie Nicks was inducted into the Hall of Fame separately from Fleetwood Mac, but she deserves everything, so I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Everything Stevie Nicks wants, she can have. Well, let's find out if Sister Rosetta Thorpe has been uh, inducted. She is really one of the huge mm -hmm. influences on Chuck Berry. And if you don't know who Sister Rosetta Thorpe is, check her out on YouTube. I think you'll be quite surprised. Mm. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> yes, ma'am. A lot of parents, many, 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 many parents, <laughs> use security controls to keep the children from getting into trouble online. But apparently, <laughs> most kids have no problem getting around all that. <laughs> So, A, are you surprised that your kids can actually get around all your parental guidance? Uh, and B, is it new? Do you think that's a new thing, or have we always gotten around parental oh, guidance? Yeah. We've always gotten around it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for sure. I, I, I can't really keep, I try to keep up with technology mm -hmm. so that I can figure out what's right. going on. Right. Um, but my kids circumvent it. All the time. So you're in the 90s now. Yeah, I'm kind of in the yeah. 90s. Okay. I'm All still I know kind is of in the 90s. We have um, two remote controls for the TV, which is so complicated. You got to yeah. click about 20 buttons before it turns on. I walked in the other day, and my one and a half year old had Peppa Pig on, watching yeah. it by herself. Yeah. No idea how she picked that up. <laughs> no yeah. idea. I it's, can't even do so it. I call my husband every day. Now. I'm like, how do I change the channel? Yeah, they're so can't figure they're it out. so tech savvy now. <laughs> it's yeah. unbelievable. No. I know, Whoopi, it's a problem. Yeah, it's yeah. a real problem. You know what that, what that is. <laughs> they just get, they're like, look, I've been trying to give you signals. I want to watch I want Peppa, Peppa Pig. I want Peppa Pig. I walked around, and now I know you're just busy, Mom. You got twins. <laughs> Let me put Peppa on myself. Yeah. <laughs> they you figure know, it out. Because they know how to do their watching. I get this, too. Well, 
I like to think that Charlotte and Aiden haven't figured out how to turn on the television yet, but now I'm thinking I need to go back yeah, and look at look. the monitors to go see look. whether or not <laughs> that's actually a valid um, assumption. They're sneaky. Yeah. They do it when you're they gone. They are no. sneaky, but I think that what we, like, we do need better tools as parents mm -hmm. to ensure that we are controlling what particularly yeah. our little kids are watching because we don't want them exposed to things that aren't kind of in the Peppa Pig. Watch, watch the app store. Yeah app on your phone yes you'll find that they'll buy things my mom had that with my younger sister she yes. bought like hundreds of dollars of coins for some <laughs> for the in game, game, game play in game yes. Yes. No. in game Aaron, play. you know what i'm talking I've about watch the app yeah. store but when you were growing up it was probably a little hard with secret <laughs> service walking around like did you get away with things I, I wasn't very rebellious, which now oh. I kind of think is sad, actually. <laughs> like, I, I you didn't have much of a choice. I wish so. maybe I had been a little more rebellious. <laughs> um, it's okay. I wish I had been less, so <laughs> why don't we meet someplace in the middle? I have no children. This isn't my problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Yet. God. Yet. No. I don't sit in that chair. Although, so, Chelsea, if you sit yeah, in that yeah. chair, you'll get pregnant again. That's the pregnant <laughs> chair. Jasper's no, not okay. much okay. <laughs> no. I just want to be clear. You're not getting pregnant sitting next to me. <laughs> we'll be right back. Just the chair. What happened when Alyssa Milano met face to face with Senator Ted Cruz after their Twitter debate on gun control laws? She's live on The View next. This week on The View, the topics are hotter than ever. So I'm going a, a little bit rogue. We got a hell of a show. Plus, we've got James Bader, Victoria Beckham, and we're closing out the week with a musical performance by Common. I can't wait. It's all this week on The View on ABC. I love it. Hello. Actress and activist Alyssa Milano has spoken out powerfully on issues like sexual assault, gun control laws, and a woman's right to choose. And now she's teaching the next generation how powerful their voices can be in her new children's book, Hope Project Middle School. Please welcome Alyssa Milano. <laughs> Issues. I know. Very high. I'm very high. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we were talking about last night on yes. television, and you saw the debates, did you? What I did. did. I actually thought it was the best debate so far, and mm. I thought that they got some really substantial issues out there. Everyone, you know, made their case. Mm. I was happy to hear people talk about infrastructure because it's a huge, yes, huge. Yeah. Not a sexy issue, but a huge issue for our country. And a bipartisan one. Yes, yeah. and it pulls really well. But we have pipes underground that are over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. so when Including you here in New York City. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. when you think about that, it's... Oh, we need to... Yeah. 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 <laughs> drink up, drink Come your water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's... it's uh, I was happy to hear that. I was happy to hear people talk about income inequality, which I think is a mm -hmm. really... Maybe the most important issue that we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. So I was happy with it. I thought it was great. Look, our bench is really stacked yeah um, they're all kind of rock stars and it's nice to to be able to support that and be proud of your candidates for your party so one of my dear close friends is like hashtag king of the yang yang hi ty mm. and he literally wanted me to ask you he was like oh i think she likes yang when he I asked love me, he him on, can you tell me why i can hashtag actually math. <laughs> well, yes, i think um i think he has first of all, change the narrative. We were talking about things in that debate last night that are specifically because Andrew Yang has brought that up. Um, I like the fact that he says, talking about his freedom dividend, that he says, look, all of these tech companies are actually mining our data for free. We're giving up every single search, every phone call we make, every purchase. We are giving up our data and we're getting nothing in return. Uh -huh. So the freedom dividend, if we look at it like that, like we're actually getting paid for them mining our data. Yeah, I think that's really, really smart. It lifts people out of poverty. The poverty level is $12,000 in this country a year. So if you're giving people $1,000 a month, that's $12,000 more. So that's $24,000 a year, which I think is great. And it's changing the conversation. And I think that's really important. So I'm not officially Yang Gang, but I'm like, 
Yeah, Jason. Yeah, Jason. Perfect. Yang Yang adjacent. Does he really have a shot at becoming the candidate and becoming the president? Um, I'm not thinking of any of them like that right now. Okay. And I think we get in a really dangerous place when we set our minds so early on candidates. Mm -hmm. I'm collecting information and trying to be an educated voter. Right. And I feel like the longer we we wait between when we make our decision to the to the, the day we vote, that's when things get really like uh, passionate and and too ugly. Mm -hmm. Cuz then we start the infighting and the yeah. splintering off. And that's why like I I haven't endorsed anybody because mm -hmm. what what does it do for for any of us? I, I think everyone needs to go in there and make up their minds, educate themselves, mm -hmm. and then vote for, from their heart. And, and we early. don't have to know. I don't, I don't have to know. It's early. Yeah, it's our, early. Our primary so in New York is six months away. Yes, yeah, so yeah. much can happen. Six months it's away. Very now early. And then. So I want to switch gears um, to your podcast called Sorry Not Sorry. Yes. Um, and yesterday Great marked the two-year <laughs> anniversary of the Me Too hashtag, mm -hmm. um, and you helped that to go viral. Um, but yesterday, uh, you told, I'm sorry, on Monday, you told the story for the first time on the podcast about being sexually assaulted on a movie set. Yes. This is the first time you've told that story. What made you want to tell the story now? I think for a lot of reasons. First of all, I think... And you're think, very brave for telling that story, by the way. Thank you. Um, I think it's very, I think it's important for us in, in positions where we can uh, speak on a platform to show that... Coming to terms with this and discussing these these issues of sexual assault are very hard, and they take a lot of years. I mean, this has been 25 years. This is yeah. 25 years ago, and so so much goes into the thought of admitting this, not only to the world but to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've never really been ready for that, where I'm ready to go inside my own soul and deal with my own sexual assault. And the beautiful thing that happened for me too is that I have women from all over the world who see me and come over to me and share their stories of sexual assault. And they have given me the courage to, to not share, only share my stories, but to, to dive deep inside myself and figure out what that means to heal and to grow and to continue on the path of moving this movement forward so that we can ensure that our children's generation of, of women and, and men who are sexually assaulted never have to deal with this again. Mm -hmm. And so part of this for me was very personal, yeah. but also what I felt like I needed to do for the women that have um, shared their stories with me. Yeah. And whoever did that, Knows he who he is. In the he name. knows who he is, mm -hmm. and he now knows you're out talking about this because he's in the industry. People probably know who he is. You don't want to say his name. You, you said you're wrestling with. I that. was Why? so close to saying his name, and my monologue that I wrote at the end of the podcast, where where I where I come to terms with this, in the original copy, I actually said his name, but I got so scared, and I think a lot of women can relate to this, mm. that when we confront our abusers that we don't want to ruin their lives and their livelihoods because it's really hard. This man has a family. He has children. He has a successful job. And maybe it was 25 years ago. Maybe he's gotten therapy and 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 I just I wasn't ready to um, accuse him and have that blow up. And also the good people on the set that dealt with that at that time, like then they would be confronted with having to talk about it in the press. And it just became so overwhelming that I was like, this is what I can do right now, and this is it. And maybe at some other point I can do more, mm -hmm. but right now this is what I can do. Okay. And you made that decision for yourself. And I made that decision I think in my own time. In your own and time, by the way, for your own self. That's what Me Too is all about. Mm -hmm. And the hashtag, it doesn't, you don't have to name your accuser. You don't have to say exactly what happened to you. You just have to stand in solidarity with other women that have faced this horrible reality. Well, and... I think you're doing this also to role model for younger people who are watching this play out exactly. in real time and thinking then about kind of what would be right for themselves and their own lives and what they're willing to accept and not accept. 
you're also doing this in a format that I think is really important through your new children's book. Thank um, you. And Thank you. I read it <laughs> over the weekend and Thank I you. loved it. Thank you. Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, poor Charlotte is going to have to navigate like friendship dynamics soon. Yeah. I um, know. Well, but middle school is really a, 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 an age that we never talk about. It's, it's a, a tough rough time. age. So why did you write time. this book and why did you kind of put it in a sixth grader's eyes? Okay. Well, I think that children have the most innate ability to be compassionate and empathetic. And they just do it. It's part of their nature. It's part of who they are. And somewhere along the lines, and maybe it's through middle school when everything becomes very about your own personal growth and what yeah. do people think about me, we lose that. And you learn and, hate. And you learn hate you, and you, you learn you're, you're ugliness of people and, and, and you feel other than sometimes yes. and what does... So I wanted it to take place in middle school because I felt like it was so important to give those kids a voice yeah. and to teach them to use their own voices. And that girls can do that. And, and that girls can do that, mm -hmm. of course. You know you're always welcome at the table, as you Thank know. you. Yeah. This is lots of fun. Our thanks to Alyssa Milano, her new book, Hope. Project Middle School is out now. And you know what, y'all? You're so good. Yeah. You're so kind. We're giving you a copy of Yay! this. And in honor of her being a UNICEF ambassador, you are also going home with a UNICEF trick-or-treat fan. We will be right back. Trick-or-treat for UNICEF. Yes. So, Chelsea, you know, also, you're welcome to come back and join us anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want everybody to celebrate today. It doesn't matter what you celebrate. Just have a little celebration. And have a great day, to everybody. And take a little time to enjoy the view. Elizabeth Warren, their biggest target at last night's debate. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. Who scored the biggest hits and who needs to step aside? And guest co-host Chelsea Clinton is giving her post-debate wrap-up and taking on rumors she wants to run for Congress. Could there be a big announcement at the table? Plus, she's the actress and activist who helped ignite the Me Too movement. Alyssa Milano on how she's showing the next generation it's never too early to voice your view. Here come Hot Topics with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. She happened to be walking past. <laughs> and she said, well, let me go in and see how these girls are doing. <laughs> Joining us as guest co-host today, please welcome okay. activist and co-author of the book, Gutsy Women, and pretty good girl, woman, in her own right, <laughs> Chelsea Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, before... I love you. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, listen, we're glad to see everybody. We are. We're glad everybody comes out. Because yeah. you don't have to come to us. You could go to another yeah. show. And you came to us. So yay for y'all. <laughs> yeah. start by asking, because apparently there are rumors that you are considering running uh, for Congress. Now, that, uh, oh, Nita Lowry, Congresswoman Nita Lowry, is not seeking re-election. Is that rumor? Is it a are you thinking about it or? I'm not considering running for Congresswoman okay. Lewis. No, why not? Um, oh, well, thank you, you Sonny. Oh, gosh, thank Little you. Um, you know, but, Whoopi, I understand why people are asking, oh, and right. someone has asked me some version of this question for literally as long yes. as I can remember. I don't know, yes. Abby's nodding. Like, one of my earliest memories is being three or four and someone saying, like, Chelsea, are you going to run for governor of Arkansas one day? <laughs> and, you know, I share that because I think it's a question. Hi, food. 
287 người question that shouldn't just be asked of people whose last name is Clinton or Hutzman. It's a question we should be asking kids, like, do you think about running for office one day? Young people? Women? And I hope that if the answer to that question is, yes, I'm considering it, that you'll really think about doing it and go to run right. for something and other resources that exist to help you do that. Do you think you ever will? I don't know, but right now the answer is no. Okay. All right. You just had a baby. I just had a baby. Three kids. Uh, Three kids. Did you, did you get any sleep last night? I actually got the most sleep last night that I've gotten since Jasper was born. Good. Oh, I slept that's a good night. Almost seven hours. That's a good night. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Enjoy no. today while well it lasts. I mean, I feel like I have superpowers because I got a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> There's some disappointed people in the audience, but it's okay. Yeah. One, have day, to one wait. day you might. You never Maybe. know. Yeah. Maybe, but not now. Well, there's a lot of not disappointing things happening. What happened last night, apparently, on television. Mm -hmm. And as the Democrats met in Ohio for the fourth presidential debate, and the biggest target, apparently, of the night was Senator Elizabeth Warren. Take a look. Costs will go up for the wealthy, they will go up for big corporations, and for middle class families, they will go down. I will not sign a bill into law that does not lower costs for middle class families. At least Bernie's being honest here and saying how he's going to pay for this and that taxes are going to go up. And I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but you have not said that. And I think we owe it to the American people to tell them where we're going to send the invoice. The difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. I agreed with the great job she did and I went on the floor and got you votes. I got votes for that bill. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I guess they think Elizabeth is the one to, to uh, beat right now. Did she, did she hold her own? I thought she was terrific, actually. You know, she she is the lady with the plan. It's clear that she is obviously the front runner, at least in their minds, because that's why she was under attack so much. She never lost her cool. She didn't lose her pacing. I think that's what you need to do in a debate. Um, she had the most time speaking. She spoke for 22 minutes and 32 seconds, yeah. as opposed to, let's right. say, Kamala Booker, uh, Kamala Harris, rather, who it spoke happens. for 1224, 12 and Booker spoke for 1119. So, I mean, you know, she, had, she took up, up the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was a misstep, though, with the, her Medicare for All um, plan, because we know she's the lady with the plan, but she's not really explaining how she's going to pay for it, and yeah. they pounced on her for that. Time and time again. And time I actually time give, again. I give Mayor Pete, uh, and I think Amy Klobuchar, uh, kudos. Mayor Pete, who I've liked from the beginning, but I thought last night was his best performance yet. He came out swinging. He's in that moderate lane. Uh, Klobuchar's there, but Biden also... But he delivers what Biden is saying, I think, so much better. He's a great debater. And so if you were just reading this debate, the transcript, and you didn't know their age, you didn't know what they look like, you didn't know much about them, I think the, 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 the way that people were polling today would be very different. I think the way we'd be talking about them would be very different. Mm -hmm. His numbers in, in fundraising as well is, yeah. uh, you look at his campaign coffers, he has 23.3 million compared to Biden, who has 8.9. Money they can spend right now in their campaign. Does money speaks. Plan. Listen, money speaks, but, he, but, he but had, BS walks. He hit back and on plan, one. And just because you got money doesn't mean you have He does have, have a plan. And wh plan. what I like about him is he says, let's live in reality. If you want to win this election, you've got to give people a choice. So what has he said that, so that got you fired up? For example, you, he's all for, like, let's find better well, health care and more options for people. But you can't tell the American people, you can't, you don't have a choice in this. He also had a great moment with Beto O'Rourke on guns when Beto said, I'm going to go in people's homes and take people's guns. He huh. said, you, this is a purity test. Mm -hmm. That's never going to pass. So let's live in reality once again. I think that is, that is the way to beat Trump. Huh. If you go so far to the left and say, we're going to live in this world that's never going to exist, you're not going to get people in the middle. Yeah. They're going to have no option but to maybe vote for Trump again. Uh -huh. That's what's going to happen. Well, if that's the only option for people in the middle, then it's not the middle. Amen. <laughs> that's not the middle if that's the only option. Uh -huh. What do you think? Oh, I have many things to say. Last night I was live tweeting it because there's only so much time in these segments. Um, I will say uh, I thought Warren did a terrible job and she was on her heels all night and it showed just how vulnerable she actually is. We watching the same debate, I disagree. Yeah but, yeah, but I'm watching it as a Republican. You're watching it as That's a true. far left progressive. I say that with respect to you. Oh, I'm not a far left um, progressive at all. Actually. Compared to me, you are. Compared to everybody in this room, it is. It's fine. But I will say um, I thought, I actually thought Mayor Pete came out swinging really hard and I mm -hmm. thought it was quite impressive. I don't know what Beto's doing other than running for MSNBC host coming up. I'm sure he'll get a good hour. Tom, 
That's right. Tom Steyer's Christmas tie was deeply distracting the entire time. And I want to say Andrew Yang brought up the topic of automation. The only reason why we're talking about automation is because an entrepreneur from New York, not from California, messed that up when he was on here, brought it to the forefront, and he had a way better answer than Elizabeth Warren did. Hmm. And also, I think, uh, you know, it's one of the things that people slammed your mom about because people forget that, you know, it's not immigrants coming over and taking your jobs away. Your jobs are being phased out. They are being yeah. done by uh, machines. So let's be realistic about what's going on and, and find ways to get people, to encourage people to find new ways of of moving your life ahead when you know because we've seen it happen when automation comes in yes. a lot of stuff disappears but we'll be at least on the democratic stage those were issues that were being discussed yeah. right at yeah. least yeah. like gun violence was discussed at least opioids were discussed mm -hmm. at least universal health care was discussed and not treated as a pipe dream but treated as something that has to become reality in our country mm -hmm. and so to me like just the contrast to republicans with all due respect i could not have been more clear on what feelings. we were talking about <laughs> right. last right. night and i like that we had this dynamic <laughs> Conversation. Can I ask you this? I'm supposed to say that. Uh, do you want this thing? What is it? It's a, a moment well, from last night that you all were talking about this morning and you, Chelsea, were talking about it. Take a look. We are seeing all over this country women's reproductive rights under attack. And God bless Kamala. But you know what? Women should not be the only ones taking up this cause and this fight. And men. Thank it is you. not just Thank because you. women are our Senator. daughters and our friends and our wives. It's because women are people and people deserve to control their own body. So that okay. was kind of a special moment, I thought, last night, because so often, with all due respect to the men in the audience, mm -hmm. when women's rights are discussed, men often start with as a father of a daughter, mm. or as the son of a mother, mm -hmm. or as the brother to a sister, or as a husband to my wife. No! It shouldn't matter. Like, our human rights are our human rights, and those should be respected and protected and advanced because we're human beings, not yeah. because of your relationship to a woman in your own life. And I was so, so, so grateful that he made that point so strongly last night. Yeah. He did That's a good point. He also said point. as a vegan at one point, and I was like, you got the vegan point locked and loaded. You're right. <laughs> got it. I, do, I, I do, was I like, do. I don't know what that has to do with anything. I don't, maybe I'll ask Thank both guys this. But why won't Elizabeth Warren answer the question on whether or not the middle class will have their taxes raised with the Medicare for All? Because she's very good at spinning. I think they're going to be raised, and I think they're going to save, it. They're gonna save money by, let's say, perhaps not having the insurance premiums that so many of us have when we go to the doctor. So but perhaps they'll have more money in their pockets. But I think you have to, if you look at the breadth and depth of her, of her plan, the money has to probably come from taxing the middle class as well. I, I think that's just the truth. She can take some of that money, that trillion dollars that Amazon yeah. is sitting on. Yeah. Well, that's what she was saying initially. I, well, no, uh, no you know, the only one that said it is Andrew Yang. And I still don't understand why that idea of trillion dollar companies, which is something we've never had in this kind of, no, that we've never had in a company before. Well, you know what? Let me shut up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Still ahead, Alyssa Milano on why she decided it was time to reveal her sexual assault nightmare on a movie set. Hi, so welcome back. So I'm going to finish making my point. I'm going to try to make it more succinct than I was doing. In 2018, 60 Fortune 500 companies paid zero federal income tax, according to the Institute of Taxation and Shameful. Economic Policy. Companies like Amazon, Delta, Chevron. Amazon became a trillion dollar company last year. Yeah. Wow. The idea that I don't mind. See, I don't mind if you're not paying your taxes because you've built this amazing company. This is still America mm -hmm. where we say you can come here and build a company. I'm all for that. But if you're making a trillion, if you're a trillion dollar company, 
we should be benefiting from that as people who are a maybe part of families whose companies have been closed because you've opened this gigantic thing that's okay i don't mind that you're making money i like making money but when you become a trillion dollar company you need to pass some of that on and share. that two cents that you want to take from me after all the taxes that i'm paying for your phone tax you don't know what your phone tax is for do you, you don't know what any of those taxes are for. Mm -hmm. You're traveling on the highways, you're paying uh, a toll. You're paying taxes just to stay here. I want some of that money back, and I want it from the places where we spend a lot of money, and those are those big companies. That's what I want them to tell, because people can't send their kids to camp, because they can't write anything yeah. off now. Well, I don't like that. It was the, that little bit of money that you got back was something you could you could look forward to. I mean, my I'm kid was like, yeah. February is coming. I'm going to get that check. Yeah. You know, doesn't happen anymore. February came. No check. She was mad. <laughs> she was really because it's that, you know, I don't have to do everything for her. That's the money she deals with her grandkids with. She can do what she needs to do. And that money's gone. Yeah. So if you if we're just working to pay taxes for stuff that isn't helping us. I don't see why we can't dip and get some of that. Well, I think all of the candidates have mentioned that they're going to roll back a lot of the Republican tax mm -hmm. code. That Thank the, you, the one that was The one that was yeah. just... Yeah, uh, he was good on that last that night. Was, that was changed. Mm -hmm. That was a huge topic last yeah. night. That was like a 30-minute part of the debate was just the size of these companies and what they're each going to do. And then it went into some strange back and forth about whether Trump's Twitter account should be deleted. Yeah, but I think the sunny point is a really good one, right? Is that one of the reasons this is such an acute conversation is not only do we have companies paying a lot of money to avoid paying taxes, mm -hmm. which I think is shameful, um, but we're also living in a reality where the Trump administration with the Republicans in Congress slashed corporate tax rates, right? Yeah. right? And not only are they then not paying their fair share, Whoopi, you know, they're not helping to be the world kind of that we want, I think, all our kids to grow up in. Yeah. Help paying for clean water, paying for good yeah. infrastructure, yeah. paying for they universal health care. Yes. They could be much better corporate yeah, citizens. But that's that's the the they could be much better corporate citizens. are going to benefit. That's a Republican idea anyway, that just the, the idea that companies should give so much more back to society. In the sense that, like, you know, for example, like my grandpa created a company and he gave basically all of his money back to building a cancer hospital. Mm -hmm. Do what you can in your community, in your mm -hmm. environment, to help the people around you, to help the people yeah. that you serve. Well, that's generally the, the, the notion, right? Mm -hmm. The Republican notion. And Megan can speak to it better, but yeah, that the, the corporations are given these tax, uh, these tax cuts because they think then they're going to hire more people. There'll be more jobs. They're going to put it, you know, back into the community. That I don't happen. see that happening. Yeah. It that seems like people are just reinvesting in their own companies, buying back, buying back their stock, and not necessarily investing in the communities where they're open opening up stores, not raising uh, salaries for people in their companies. So I don't know why that is still the notion, about, yeah. but, wow. but that there are some it doesn't ones, seem to work. We shouldn't trust them just to do that, just, right? Yeah. That's why we need to have higher taxes on them so that it is expected yeah. of them that yeah. they then do that. And somebody said age came up yesterday. Is that correct? It did. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, I, I you know, I, I, it was... Um, uh, Aaron that asked a question, mm -hmm. kept on asking questions about Bernie's heart attack, then w went to, I think we have a clip, but then she went to Elizabeth Warren and she also went to uh, Biden, mm -hmm. but didn't necessarily ask the younger folks on, on the about stage. There's, there's a clip they're telling me in my oh. ear. Let me invite you all to a major rally we're having in Queens, New York. That is how I think I can reassure the American people. One of the reasons I'm running is because of my age and my experience. With it comes wisdom. I will outwork, outorganize, and outlast anyone, uh, and that includes Donald Trump. Trump, Mike Pence, or whoever the Republicans get stuck with. <laughs> They clearly were all very vibrant mm -hmm. uh, last night. And just again, like the juxtaposition to Trump, when he ran, we knew nothing about his health. Right. He still discloses. Remember that doctor? No. Yes. That was the doctor that said he was like, he died. The handwritten yes. note. Yeah. And now, you know, we still know very little about his health from his official. And he's 73 exam. as well. So it, it makes me so very upset, though, because I, I do think 
there was such an emphasis, at least for me at the and time when my dad was running. Fact, he literally had to have is from our first uh, general show at a Mayo Clinic I was to go through to the first point that like, I wanted to be there today, but due to some scheduling things I couldn't even know about. I am thinking about her, and we're going to actually share some of her journey right here on our show shortly. And on an up note, it's also my mom's birthday. Oh!